Last October, meaning October of 2022, we saw the conclusion of House of the Dragon season one here in December of 23. So almost 14 months later, we have our first teaser trailer has been released. It's already the most watched trailer in HBO history, apparently. And that's pretty cool. Good news. And it looks pretty fun. So we're here to discuss it. The first half will be spoiler free, just what we see from the trailer. So hmm, what you see in the trailer can be a little spoilery, but what won't go beyond what we can see and reasonably extrapolate. And we'll have Sean here for that. And the second half of this episode, we will discuss spoilers, things that we know from Fire and so Blood, but we're going to discuss all that and more on this episode of History of Westeros podcast. Hello and welcome everybody. We are back with some TV discussion. Like I said, the first time we've had a full TV episode in quite a while. I guess you'd have to go back to that same October of 2022 mm -hmm. for our last discussion on it. But of course, it's coming back and it's time to get excited and see what we can say about it. As usual, our live streams, when they happen, are most of the time Sundays at 3. An exception is when we're during TV season, so that will change when the TV season rolls around. Every episode is a video on YouTube and on Spotify, and it's available on audio everywhere you listen to podcasts, and it's ad-free if you listen on Patreon. Hey, Sean, how's it going? You excited for House of the Dragon Season 2, the the excitement starting to rise just a little bit you got to temper it because we know we still have several months left but it's in sight at least huh i'm gonna say a lot of it and i'm not tempering it man i'm just excited <laughs> watching a trailer and i went back and watched the final episode of last season and i just Ooh. can't wait i just i love so much the power they present just the, the mystique they create with the the settings and the outfits and the 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 i can't think of the word i want to use them vocabulary the manner of speech you know the, mm. the, the epicness of it just dripping with awesome i just can't <laughs> yeah just right like on. what's this what is this mf are gonna do now when it comes to damon you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah, and, exactly uh, <laughs> and just the, the emoting that just the the toughness that alicent and rainier are going through it just um i mean it, it's tough and it's tragic but it's just so captivating you know i can't wait and Ashea over here has a, a cat in her lap. That's a great way to get started. I have a cat gripped by the neck. You, you do. Tell. <laughs> I have a cat gripped. He loves to have his, his neck stable with my, my hand around it. <laughs> you got that I, reverberating but, through you, the purr going through your I arm. I do. It is a really nice purr. Um, I can feel rumbling. I also have a nice shirt today. I have a Helena, Bug Girl Helena which is by Sanrixian in the Joe Magician Threadless Shop. Aziz also has the Seed is Strong, a House Strong shirt, also by Sanrixian, and found in the Joe Magician Threadless Shop. That's right. Our good buddy Joe Magician back to putting out episodes. He took a little bit of a break, and he's back to it now. So that's cool. Good to see him back in action, and I'm sure we'll see plenty of content going forward. And I'm sure we'll have him back as a guest sometime in the not-too-distant future as well. I, got, I have a... You know, a Targaryen dragon shirt on, and I can't quite remember where I got it. I think I, I think got it at Gotcon. Is, is that not? Uh, wait, lean forward. I, I sit up. That looks. It's a San Rixian. That's the San Rixian Targaryen. Yeah, it's San Rixian. Okay. It, okay. it actually definitely is. We are all San Rixian yeah. all the time today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get right to it. As usual, you can find any information you need about our show, anything we've talked about, any links, anything like that, at historyofwesteros.com. Always a good place to get involved or to catch up on what we may have said that you missed as well. Um, I want to point out that uh, those of you who are watching live can certainly send us live questions. If you've watched the trailer, go ahead and uh, say what you want to say. Any observations, any takes. If your take involves spoilers, we will save it for the second half, though, because Sean is still unsullied, only on Fire and Blood. He has now read everything else, World of Ice and Fire, except for the parts about the Dance of the Dragons that he could remain unspoiled on this. You've read the main series. You've read Duncan Egg. You've read all that. So this is the one thing that you're still unsullied on. We're keeping it that way because it's fun to have your different takes, your reactions without uh, preconceived notions. And that has 
been pretty fun. It's it's paid off pretty well for us. A couple of things you've noticed, more than a couple of things you've noticed that we might not have uh, noticed otherwise. I'll point it out as it comes up, but there are a couple minor things I've been spoiled on in the past couple. Okay, of days. Okay, yeah, it is hard not to significant, but yeah. yeah. And there'll, there'll be a few other maybe little things just from analyzing the trailer, even without spoilers, that'll lead you to maybe spoilery thoughts, but not too spoilery. Again, let me repeat, we do not discuss leaks on here. We do discuss casting news, but that will be second half as well. So, And in the second half, I mean, filming reports is a gray area, but there are photos from filming that aren't really leaked. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't call anything. If we feel it's leaky, we won't discuss it. That's how we say it. Like, I don't think a set, something we see on set, is probably not leaky because it's something we already knew from Fire and Blood. It confirms something we already knew. If it's something completely new, that's when we'll be a little more cagey about it. But this trailer, I'd say, wasn't super spoilery in terms of non-Fire and Blood material, though definitely has some. And, of course, our discussions, we want to be able to go wherever we want to go in the second half. So that's that. Nothing different in terms of our approach in past seasons. This is how we've always done it. As Montel Jordan would say, this is how we do it, though he would say it much nicer and with a cooler uh, emphasis and all that. But, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll want to point out a couple things when it comes to, quote unquote, spoilers that, you know, again, I don't want to be spoiled. I like to take it as it comes, especially when there are maybe like big twists or mysteries to figure out and stuff. But it really is more about how it happens and what happens. Yes, you know, that's true. Like, Absolutely. I know that Winterfell is not going to get burnt down, you know, like, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure anyway, yeah. but that doesn't make me any less interested, you know, may, some details of some of these characters, you know, who lives or dies or wins even, I, I'm not sure about, but, um, uh, but, but, you know, I, I think that, uh, if you started watching or reading Game of Thrones, knowing Ned Stark was going to get killed and we were like, Oh, well, I guess I don't care anything about Jamie's plight. Or is not interesting because <laughs> I found out Ned dies. You know, that's it's it's not about what happens, it's about how it happens. Yeah, I, and this fandom I think is well experienced with that conceptually. Not only because that's how Game of Thrones went for anyone who read the books and, until they started diverging a lot or whatever, but the same thing here. I mean, people reread Game of Thrones. Like we're a show that discusses rereads, right? You don't reread it because you are expecting a bunch of surprises the second time through, right? <laughs> like you are going to be surprised by some things because you missed things, but they're not like big plot twists that you just, you'll oh. be surprised by the foreshadowing that was there for yes. the surprising thing yes. that you didn't catch the first time around. You'll be surprised at how well set up it was or the symbolism that you didn't catch things like that. Journey I, I also want to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also want to say when it comes to this trailer, I'm assuming, and I feel pretty confident in this assumption. Most of these images they're coming from the first couple episodes. They're not going to yep. show us stuff from like the finale or even the midpoint. I don't think, you know, or if they do, it's very vague, just like a castle that could see a scene of a castle could come almost anywhere. It doesn't really spoil yeah, something. So. Exactly. Or just like one of the main characters just sitting in a chair, like well, that could happen in, which yeah. we do have shots of like, that could be any point in the season. That's not very spoilery unless there's something in the background, but you know, they would probably be aware of something in the background. Uh, you would think they know so, that yeah. we and a bunch of people like us are going to, pick this apart looking for any clue we can so you know, i imagine <laughs> these days they're much more careful about spoilers especially with things that people really care about you know some yeah. action movie of the week sometimes the trailer is the movie you know they pretty much go through the entire plot yeah they the do give away yeah and that's yeah. like something that's happened more in the last like 10 20 years where movies just don't seem to care like yeah we don't care if we spoil most of the plot to you because you know honestly the plot's not the, the draw in the first place yeah. it's, it's the car the chase scenes the, or the, the fun the, stuff the, and, yeah. the superstar actor or whatever yeah exactly exactly so hey what are you drinking today sean uh, myself i got i'm not drinking coffee at the moment i got a big giant tomato juice here you know very very oh. healthy right in my star wars cup which is <laughs> helps make it even more full of nutrients <laughs> i have uh it's become a little more standard for me i've got the naked uh green machine drink mixed with the pina colada sparkling ice mixed with magic mine all right nice that's very very green of you mm-hmm <laughs> All right, let's get to it. I'm First also image. wearing a green hairband. I have this black and red shirt on, but I have a green drink and a green hairband. So, so you are we take, on theme. Yeah, should we take your Targaryen shirt to actually be a green Targaryen shirt, <laughs> uh, despite appearances? So, hold on a second. Hold on. Mr. Kristen Cole. Green, I'm wearing green fan. underwear, too. I'm wearing green <laughs> underwear. <too. laughs> you got, you're really on theme today, Sean. I actually am, too. Well done. 
Yeah. No, you yeah. Are. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> don't don't let facts get in the way of a good story. Z. Yeah, say, just say that you are. Yeah. It's it's pretty black though, so I do at least one of the colors is right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, first image from the trailer is one of the first images of the trailer itself, meaning the first one we'll look at is Rhaenyra gazing out over Shipbreaker Bay. That is not over. That's not Dragonstone. That's not say Driftmark. That is absolutely Storm's End in the distance, which. Uh, is it, this is familiar in that we had lots of scenes during season one of her looking out over the water, which it's a very easy way to look reflective. And she had plenty of things to reflect over, plenty of things to be sad about or to be planning. And this is worse than all of those things in terms of being sad about because he's very clearly going there in some capacity because of what just happened to her son. And we're pretty sure she's wearing the same clothes she was wearing uh, in that last scene of season one where she's getting the news and it's it's just music and I mean look at her face there she's she's in grief there's dirt on her face uh yeah uh not looking forward to the grief itself but I know that uh it's gonna be amazingly done so uh we're looking forward to that much yeah lots of grief and I'm gonna what do you think Sean like what would her counsel say? Like, don't go there. Like, don't stay. W what are you doing? Don't just go there. Like, they, they just, something awful happened. Like, we can't r have you risking yourself running out there. So, um, but she sometimes, seems to have gone on her own. From yeah, sometimes tell. what the counsel says, what's risky doesn't matter. They're, you know, yeah. moments of like grief and emotion. They're just going to do it anyway. Uh, I, w one thing I didn't take so much note of, uh, because I think I even, you know, I usually watch each episode two times as it comes out, at least, and probably a third and fourth usually. Um, but just watching it again, just last night, I watched it again, uh, the, the last episode of the last season. Multiple times, Damon just did something. And, and you remember there was even a yeah. point where Rainier was talking right. to her sons, and uh, and I guess Jace went, you know, they were having this council meeting, and Damon's like rattling off these orders, and Jace is like, don't do that. My mom just said no one do anything. And Damon's like, go send those ravens anyway. You know, he yeah. still kept doing, <laughs> even when Rhaenyra came in, he was still kind of barking off orders and making decisions. And I felt like mostly she probably would have done or said the same thing. She was kind of accepting it. It wasn't worth fighting that battle, you know. But uh, but she did kind of put her foot down when when Otto showed up, for example. Um, yeah, that's true. But. But anyway, I can imagine a similar sort of thing where a bunch of people are probably telling her what she should or shouldn't do. And she just is not listening. She's going, you know. I wonder, though, the dirt on her face. Is that dirt? How did it get there? Could it be ash? Could it be from sort could of be. scuffle of some sort? Or, yeah, or, she, or could it she, be from some ceremony, maybe? Was there some dragon? Yeah, yeah, it could be. Uh, it could be a ceremony, like some sort of grief. Yeah, it could be. Like, I was wondering about that, too. It could be ash rather than just dirt. But it's definitely there. It's not... It's not uh, it's not just like our imagination <laughs> yeah. or just the lighting or something. She hears about her son's death and she's flown to Storm's End in grief and uh, probably in haste, which would make sense given the traumatic news she's just received. She may have been told by her counsel it's a bad idea. One thing, one question I'm going to have here is whether or not she actually confronts Lord Boros or whether she just searches around the area, maybe looking for evidence, maybe looking for a body. And uh, I <laughs> will she find one? Will she find like Arax's head or a wing? I kind of doubt she finds her son's body because that's it's a, so much smaller and you know might have been eaten or just sunk. But in Fire and Blood, minor spoiler, there are there's some there's multiple sources as usual. We are told that one of the sources says body parts were found. So it doesn't say by whom, so they might be doing that, having Rainier find that, which would be pretty gruesome and make her even more traumatized already. Actually seeing physical evidence of what happened would just make it worse. So yeah, brace yourself for that possibility. Yeah, I was wondering if the, what looks like a dirty face, I thought it's possible maybe some sort of ceremony, but it, I don't know when or how that could have happened or if she would have just done it on her own. You know, Maybe someone else did accompany her. Um, and it's also, it is a good question if maybe this is before she actually goes to Storm's End or after, or does she ever? Um, I think, I feel like just that 
you know, flying around and dragons way up in the air at high speeds that where he lands and where his body might float in the water, it seems too impossible. It seems like in modern times with like a bunch of coast guard ships and satellite imagery and everything, they, they wouldn't be able to find it. But I would accept if they did, even if it seems a little unrealistic, because for the sake of the show, we might need to know, right? He can't just be missing. They need to know that he's dead. I think that that's how I feel for the plot to progress. Um, and, and that might even explain it too. If she does find him, maybe she tries to bury him. You know, mm. she, maybe she finds some part Oof. of him or the dragon that might explain why the face is dirty. And it, I, yeah, I don't know how it went point. in the books, but it, for the sake of cool action, uh, and, and, you know, it wasn't just cool action. Cause I do think that that dragon fight slash chase scene, it was symbolic in a lot of ways too. You know, it wasn't yeah. just cool action. It, um, it was Absolutely, cool action. Yeah. And, and, I don't, <laughs> and I usually care way less about cool action than character development and everything like that, but it was very symbolic. But as part of it, they had him fly through that sort of ravine and cliffs, you know, so they weren't just completely out over the middle of the oceans. And maybe that was at least partly set up to, a likely place for Rhaenyra or someone to look for the body, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So the next shot we have is Rhaenyra. I call it Rhaenyra flying mad, which quite possibly is just related to this. This is her flying to Storm's End afterwards. The way it's presented in the trailer, it's like they kind of make it look like she's about to go up against Aemon because the actual next shot is Aemon on Dragonback facing the other direction. And then he like banks left. But it's almost certainly not related. It could be. But it's just, I think it's just a standard sort of trailer thing to make it look like something's happening or to pair similar moments up together just to spark the imagination. Sort but, of a segue, not necessarily a yeah chronological ordering. Yeah, you know. and there's another one like this too, where they have Damon sitting in a chair. We'll come to it later. I'm not asking for the image to be put on screen now, but just to make this point, there's Damon look, sitting at a table eating, and then there's Aemon sitting at a, at a table facing the other way. But from the and it makes it look like they're seated at the same table. But a close up reveals that the backgrounds are very different and all that. It's like these are probably not sitting at the same table. Uh, might be it might be uh just like this one might be but it's probably not uh, just most likely trailer tricks and again with this shot of rainier flying mad it's this pretty much this i'm pretty positive it's the same clothing she was wearing as well so uh most likely related to that and and of course it's unlikely she's wearing those exact same outfit later in the season because they love to switch that stuff up <laughs> it's possible but but not likely so uh, that's a lot of that. So we wonder to see if she's going to see the body. We wonder if she's going to confront Lord Boros. Just in general, this is a very interesting moment of her going there. And it quite possibly is like right after what we saw at the end of the season, which in itself is interesting given how many time jumps there were last season to pick up like right where we left off. A, a very difference in pacing and tone in terms of that. So I'm looking forward to that in terms of a change of how the show is going to operate this season versus last year. Not that I didn't have a problem with the time jumps. They were more of a, you know, a necessary thing that had to be done. But, I, you know, I think we all probably prefer to not have time jumps and we won't have significant ones this time. So that's right. There's another shot here that I think is related. Damon and Rainier are touching heads. And it's a moment of grief. It might be right before she runs away or this might be immediately after. This could be even closer to the end of season uh, one than, than some of these other moments. This could be like right then. Uh, or it could be after she returns. She comes back from Storm's End, confirms the news or something like that. And this is her comforting, uh, him comforting her. I I see this a little different, by the way. Okay, okay. Because I don't think this is like a forehead to forehead moment of intimacy. I think this oh. is someone telling a secret. I think they're trying to oh. say something in private to each other. Okay, okay. I like that. That could definitely be a, yeah, I, I think you might be right. Like he he doesn't have that soft look on his face. He does kind of look more like, a little more intense than you might expect. It is Damon, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter, <laughs> sure. But I think I like, yeah, I like that take. You might be right. Uh, during the these early scenes, of course, there's voiceover happening, and one of the two voices is Otto, and the other seems to be Rainey's. Well, not seems to be, is definitely Rainey's. And this shot here appears to be that precise conversation where she's talking about war between kin and dragon versus dragon. Yeah, I mean, she's the one who didn't burn the opposition because, A, she didn't 
necessarily think it was going to come to war and there's a chance that it could it could be averted and also it wasn't her war to start things like that here she seems to be discouraging rainier from from the same path that she herself didn't take or at least warning her of what's happening uh, or what she's getting into um because she might be rushing into it after hearing of the death of her son i'm guessing this might also be related to very like you said very early in the season stuff here and this conversation, you'd think that this conversation about dragon versus dragon and kin versus kin definitely isn't happening later in the season after they've already started fighting, right? So it's almost certainly uh, an episode one or episode two thing. Any, any thoughts? I want to say something about this, about this shot. A lot of times the camera shifting focus in depth to different characters is just to shift our attention. But I don't know if this is happening here, but I like to think what's happening here is deeper than that. Mm. Rhaenyra is clear. Oh, sorry, Rainey's is clear and focused. Oh, good point. Rhaenyra is maybe a little out of focus, unsure. She, you know, the, the way this shot is presented, you know, the cameras, the camera has her more in focus, but I think it might be symbolic of like where they're at with their decisions and their comfort level and their uh, certainty about the future or, or their own morality or whatever it is. You know, I, I hope, you know, I think that Game of Thrones and the filmmakers behind it would use that symbolic filmmaking aspect, not not just shifting our focus to who's talking, you know. Speaking of, that's a very good take, and speaking of what's in focus in the bottom right, you can vaguely see what could be the outline of, of some castle towers there, which might just be Dragonstone, so nothing too, nothing too exciting or unusual there, but it would verify uh, or help verify that this is taking place right afterwards and she's on the beach reflecting or something like that. All right, let's switch gears a little bit over to King's Landing. We've got Aegon II entering the throne room. And then almost immediately afterwards, we have a shot of him sitting on the throne. So various related shots, probably. I mean, as always, it's possible one of these is actually taking place much later. But he is wearing the same outfit. And it certainly makes sense that right after having his coronation, he would go sit on the throne and you know have his first day on the, on the throne, etc. So this, this is... Again, quite possibly taking right after episode nine in conjunction with episode 10. Some of these these events might be taking place at the same time as when Luke and and uh, Amond are having their moment. Their moment. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> so he was exalting in his newfound popularity. He was like, oh, actually, this is kind of cool. He was he didn't want to go. He didn't want to do any of this. But once the crowd was cheering for him, he started to perk up and his confidence and was boosted with it and he started to kind of realize maybe what kind of power he was starting to wield just the beginning of that you can tell that he's changed like just the way he's walking we're not we're showing that here because we're just showing images but in that the trailer with the way he's moving it's a cocky walk isn't it he's got that that a little bit it's a little bit of joffrey to it he's older than joffrey and uh, it's, it's not the same thing but it's got a little of that vibe to it and just a, another minor thing from the books he and it's true in the show as well, but I think maybe it's emphasized more in the books that he is sort of been convinced that the blacks have no chance. He's been told that they have all the power, all the symbols, everything, and it's the blacks are just going to roll over. And he believed that. So it's part of why he's so cocky and part of why he's going to be disabused of that notion pretty quickly when the blacks don't just bend the knee and, and roll over. So. He probably also doesn't even know about what happened with Eamon and Luke at this point. Probably none of them do yet. But a couple other things here. Go ahead, actually. Go ahead, Sean. You, you speak. I've been, I've been rambling for a minute. So let me get, <laughs> let you get in here. One thought I have is he might not, even though he maybe should be diffused of that notion, he might not be. He might just blame everyone for their incompetence. Like, oh, why haven't you yeah. beaten them yet? You know, okay. and it might make him not that he's set up to be a good ruler in the first place, but that might make it even worse. Um, yeah. I would. Another thing I wonder if what the scene is, you know, how quickly after the coronation it is, I, I, I'm guessing it's probably at least a day or two later. And I bet because they need some time to set up what makes sense for them to do. Everyone needs to kneel and swear fealty to him. Yeah. I bet they'll have all the lords around come in just like they did, just like uh, Viserys had everyone do for Rhaenyra, right? Like, Good point. I'm king now, right? You agree, right? Or else we're going to chop your kneel right now in front of everyone, or you know, we're going to take you off and chop your head off or something. But I just like they, they did last season with the lords who were already there at count, which, but there's so many right. more. You're right. There's so many more that have to bend the knee. They were just the ones that happened to be at court. 
at the time. They're at least going to start with them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one thing I like to point out here too, just from looking at Aegon, he's got this cool new outfit where it's got the high tower colors, but it's got dragon imagery on it. And we'll see that a lot. We'll see high tower green and gold, but with Targaryen imagery, which I think is a pretty cool way to do it. I like that. It's also super sunfire coated his dragon. Yes, gold. it is. You are very right about that. Sunfire. It, it works very well. It all fits very well. <laughs> yeah. Cause the high towers don't really have all that much gold in their color. It's more of a Tyrell thing, really, <laughs> which is maybe also a little bit of a, <laughs> hey, who's really in charge in the reach, <laughs> you know, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget the Tyrells are ruled by a little baby, meaning their or his mother is basically in charge at this point. So it's not a normal, a typical situation there at the moment. Now, I'd like to also point out the way they're walking in tells a little bit of a story and makes a few other suggestions. First of all, there's four Kingsguard, which right there is a little bit of a clue that maybe this isn't happening right after the coronation. Because why would there be four Kingsguard? There's three with Rhaenyra already so there should be four but one of them is Kristen cole and one of them is harold westerling who left so there that this implies that one of these is Kristen cole or they've got two new guys uh and some way harold westerling has to be explained away too so there's there's at least one new king's card in there <laughs> so that is a clue that it's happening a little bit later but they may have just kind of glossed over that detail they've already replaced harold westerling off screen which is a little weird considering how little time has passed but uh, if it is what it is, if that's the case, I don't necessarily like, think it's that weird because I can imagine there's someone next in line. I, I, I imagine the King's well, Guard. Well, that's not really how they do it, though, Sean. They don't really do next in line that often. Remember how they had a whole scene of Rhaenyra choosing Kristen Cole in the first season, right? That's true. That's true. They, it's yeah. not just a thing they do. Like it, it's a big deal choosing a new uh, King's Guard. They might have rushed I, it, but I wouldn't. You know, it's it's a it's a big assumption. Yeah, it, it's a little bit of an assumption, and I don't necessarily mean there is a a eighth person in line, but I can imagine there are candidates at any given point. There's like, whether they're political candidates or warrior candidates, I bet different people have in mind who could potentially be on the Kingsguard. And yeah. I'm just thinking about how that, when they had that meeting where they were like ready to go with this plan. And Allison is like, wait a minute, you guys have been planning all this behind my back. Part of that plan might've included the next up Kingsguard. They might have expected some of the Kingsguard to defect, but I don't think they yeah. I don't think they anticipated that because, again, they didn't anticipate a lot of the things that happened. That seems like a, a very small given they missed some of the big details. I'm not sure they would have caught that one, but it's possible. It's possible. And, and we'll see if they explain it. Uh, so but also I think it's really interesting that the Hightower men are or they look like Hightower men. I don't know that for sure, but they're probably Hightower men, although I don't know who they are. It's just because they're wearing green. They're standing closer to the king than the Kingsguard, which for in terms of how court is done and how things are handled, that's unusual. That shows maybe a little bit more high tower encroachment, kind of like how the Lannisters in regular game of Thrones started putting their symbols everywhere and really started to encroach on the Royal symbols and all that. That could be a little bit of what's happening here, which was already done last season. Damon and Rainier complained about how all the Targaryen imagery was gone and replaced by faith of the seven stuff. And that was off putting to them. And, doesn't show the proper Targaryen power like they were used to. So I think that might be related to that, maybe pushing a little farther in that direction. But either way, it's it's interesting the way they're they're marching in. You also have high tower men or green garbed guards at the door. So everywhere you look, there's the high tower green, which is now the greens green as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the actual shot of him on the throne. I like his crown, the show version of his crown. I, I finally had a revelation as to what it reminds me of, which is Shockwave from Transformers. <laughs> the one single red eye <laughs> at the top there. <laughs> so he's got that going. He's got the dagger at his hip there. You can see as he's walking in the dagger, which meant so much to him and is, is so full of theories and everything. Uh, so we'll see about that. Let's move to the next shot, which is the spinning ball. Aegon apparently his first time at council again we're just assuming this is his first time sitting at his own council but we don't know that for sure this could be some something a little bit later uh but I kind of guess these things are close together what do you think of this uh spinning ball the council ball thing which you put in to indicate you're there the quorum ball as we've, we've had a lot of fun nicknames for that the spinning ball around the hole is is very symbolic don't you think uh can't find rest, can't be settled, maybe circling the drain a bit is one of my favorite interpretations. Yeah, it's, yeah uh, it, 
It's, it's, At first, it's I wasn't sure who that was with the spinning ball, but it, I think it's pretty clear it's Aegon. And in you know, like a lot of things, if you stop for a second, think about why are they showing us this? What what what's the point of this? A lot of times, the answers are like, oh yeah, that's really good. You know, it, it, it adds a lot of meaning beyond just this two second image that you see. It carries a lot with it. Like you said, I think it shows it. He's bored with this whole process. He just wants to go out and fight and get girls or, you know, exercise <laughs> his power or whatever it is. He does yeah. these, these meetings. Oh, he's bored with it. But also I think one way that they're showing that here is that this is like a game to him. It's like a toy, this council mm. and his position on it. He's playing around with it. You know, he's just not taking it seriously. It's just a ball. And all, all, every <laughs> angle you can think, uh, every way this might be represented, it's all pretty negative for a ruler, for a king <laughs> in the time yeah. of war, right? Like <laughs> you're right. Like no matter all these interpretations are negative. <laughs> well, whichever yeah. ones are right or intended, they're all negative. <laughs> you're right. <Yeah>. So <laughs> my process, even if you look at them as a whole, is like, well, we could be wrong, but these are all negative. Yeah. And that is what we expect for other reasons, too. I mean, this character has not been set up to be some great person. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, we have a, another shot of Damon in the saddle with his full armor and emerging from a cave. This is almost certainly him headed out to begin his campaign. He said at the end of season one that, that Heron Hall was his target. So that's probably where he's headed. But, you know, he might go somewhere else first. We'll see. But it seems pretty safe that this is leaving Dragonstone. I don't know many other caves about that he might be around um sean how, how does he get all that armor on and off <laughs> yeah i was gonna say however badass a knight you are and you know the more badass your armor is the more likely it is you need a squire to help you put it on <laughs> and i wonder if that squire feels lonely left behind in that cave there i wonder how yeah. long he's waiting in a cave for damon to show up with his armor or whatever <laughs> he's a little tiny dragon to fly behind it's <laughs> 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 like wait for me master i'll I'll get your armor on later. But yeah, Damon, just wherever he goes, he's going to have to find a new squire. He's like, you, hey, you, you look like you have two hands. Unbuckle my armor. <laughs> Related to this one, we have a close-up of Damon's helm and Damon in armor closely after. Now, remember, the, the helm looks like the same one he's had for a while. And it is according to show notes off outside of the TV show, like things that they've said on their website. But this is a Valyrian steel helmet. So that's like, whoa, because this is, we don't really have a lot of such examples out there. It takes a lot of steel to make a helmet. Although not as much as, you know, like a breastplate or something like that. So anyway, uh, the next shot shows him walking sort of to pick that helmet up. Maybe that's, you see the helmet. And then this scene, this scene comes right after that, where he reaches to pick it up. This is looks like a new set of armor, though, doesn't it? It doesn't look like the one he was wearing at the step zones. The shoulder plates in particular look larger. Maybe because he got shot by that one arrow, <laughs> he's like, all right, <laughs> we're going to thicken this thing up a little bit. I'm not taking any more arrows to the chest. <laughs> so, yeah, his hair looks longer, too. Maybe that's just my imagination, but that would make sense, showing the passage of time. Just a way to make them look a little different from season to season. It's, it's a common thing for TV shows to do, just to... Uh, make them look a little different. He still has his daggers, his his pair of daggers, including his standard microphone dagger, which is <laughs> my favorite piece of his gear. It's cooler than even Dark Sister or his Valyrian steel helm or these new shoulder pieces. His microphone dagger. I love his microphone dagger. So you might I love it, but that doesn't mean it's cooler than Dark Sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. It's, objectively, it's not cooler. I just love it more because <laughs> it's a microphone. Speak into the mic. And this doesn't look like Dragonstone to me. What do y'all think? I think this looks maybe like it might be Heron Hall. It looks a little more run down. Like this door looks a little wonky. Like maybe it was burned recently. No, <laughs> no, not exactly that. But <laughs> I figure those doors have been replaced because that was a while ago that Laris and that Larry's burned his family. That wasn't like a week ago. That was years ago. Remember, it was before one of the other time jumps. So, yeah. Uh, but still, I don't know. I, I feel like this is not Dragonstone, but it could be. I I'm not sure enough to to say that. Um, any any thoughts on that, or is it just too hard to tell from from what we're looking at? Yeah, I'm not sure either. I I I wonder if it could be Driftmark. 
Yeah, you, I don't know if that makes sense. There. But uh, yeah, I mean, the sea snake's already on Dragonstone with him. I don't know if he has a reason to go there, but it could be. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I know why you said that. It's because of the chandelier looking thing. Kind of reminds oh. you of the seashell, like that, that, that. But it's different. It's definitely not that. But I, I like it has that similar hanging uh, thing as Driftmark. Okay, I think is what you're thinking of, Sean. Now to clarify the way we're doing these shots these are not in any order that was revealed in the trailer we have reordered them because we've tried to pair them with things that we think are paired like scene we think this is the same scene or related scene or at least it's another shot of damon i think this is probably the best shot of his new armor he's sitting at a dinner table which almost certainly means it's not dragonstone i doubt he's eating at dragonstone in full armor that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So this, again, quite possibly Heron Hall is my best guess, but it could be some other castle he's been invited to or it's just conquered or something. Yeah, he might not be eating at all. He might be intruding on someone's dinner because, again, not only in full armor, but the gloves are still on, too. So Yeah, that's true. There is a plate <laughs> right there and he's sitting at the table, but you're right. He, there's a chance he's not even eating. He might have just sat, plopped himself down to be intimidating yeah. or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, it could be misleading, uh, but he could just be having a meal in armor because he's still worried or he doesn't have a squire on. He's like, I can't take this off. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta wear it, man. But he could he'd think he'd at least be able to take his gauntlets off. Like, I think he'd probably do that on his own, but maybe not. Maybe, not. maybe it's just a little too, too wonky, even <laughs> for the thumbs. <laughs> so this is what this is that scene I referred to at the beginning where it looks like it might be where they try to make it look like a trick where the next shot in the actual trailer is Eamon sitting on the other side of a table facing this this direction so it made made to look like they're at the same table but looking behind Eamon uh, I don't know that it fits this is hard to see what's behind Damon so it's it's hard to tell what the background is here I just kind of have a hard time get, seeing Eamon and Damon having a cordial meal together also the chair is much different Eamon just sitting in when we get to it you'll see Eamon is sitting in more of like a fancy chair where Damon looks like he's sitting in this, this chair doesn't even have arms so there's some incongruities that make me think that it's not the same scene anyway we'll we'll see that that chair later here's an interesting shot a targaryen camp with a banner bearer now there's a chance this banner is actually green and i'm just not able to tell but i think that's black right okay cool occasionally like the lighting can throw you off said, but yeah i said it's black i'm muted yeah so shea is pretty clear that it's black and i trust her judgment more than mine so i think it uh, we will go with that now this is interesting it's like in a valley sort of uh but there's some stones there there's like some like a stone wall that's being like maybe either torn down or hastily put together what do you think of that wall down there sean does that tell you anything not really i i, I couldn't quite make out what it was I, I i don't necessarily disagree with you but i didn't even think it was a stone wall i thought it was like just smaller tents but mm. but it could be a wall yeah i don't know i don't know if it's meant to well, if you look to the left behind the banner bear too there's a lot of rock so this might be like a quarry or yeah. or something like that so there is some interesting detail there that it makes me think it could be the riverlands but it's very hilly which is not what you normally think of the riverlands the riverlands does have hills in it well, but not really around the, Hall. well that route from the crownlands to the riverlands like it's near to the vale is yeah. a, a landscape that it reminds me of like where aria and the hound and all that like which wasn't deep in the veil it was right on that like intersection of the three regions it's a good point and we do have reason to think there'll be scenes in the veil or at least there will be veil soldiers involved because jane aaron has declared yeah true. Uh, and we know that jace is going there to stop off there we don't know if we'll see that he may go we may not see any scenes there he may go straight to the north in terms of what we see but there is a chance this is actually in the veil now the problem with that is that if it's in the veil why do they have where's the veil flag where's like an Aaron flag it would be they would have both flags maybe that's just not seen maybe it's above the targaryen banner but you wouldn't usually see it above it would be and below I mean, the targaryen I, I, banner I probably and i don't think jace isn't traveling with any any hosts no so he's not so, fit you, him no, at you, all. exactly so they might have they might be declaring their allegiance but the fact that it's a targaryen banner actually makes it harder to tell who this is other than that they're a house that's for the blacks which narrows it down but still not by a lot <laughs> there's still a lot of houses that could be let me tell you the main thing I think when I look at this scene is how susceptible they are to a dragon strafing fire by them. That's that just that I mean that looks like an army, yeah, a small a army point. that would just be wiped out in two minutes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, they're not yeah. wisely arranging themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. It's a good point. Maybe that is a clue that they're somewhere more remote 
where they don't expect a dragon to be. It still might be a mistake, but or maybe uh, there's a dragon with them that okay guide support or look out or something. I yeah, if this is Damon after he's been in the Riverlands a little while, he's already got an army or something like that, then that could fit. All right, here's that shot of Amond sitting down. So you can see why I'm a little skeptical this is the same spot. He's above the table. He's got this much different style chair. He might be wearing a breastplate, but he's definitely not in full armor. Uh, so there's a lot of places this could be taken. This could be seen, could be happening. Something that we haven't discussed. It could just be back at King's Landing. This could be just like after a short time after he gets back from his ill-fated flight to Storm's End. But I'm not really sure. Ultimately, there's not a whole lot we can say about this scene other than Eamon's you know, looking pretty uh, pretty boss and, and relaxed despite what's going on or what's probably going on. There's no way I would normally take note of this, and I'm not very confident about it in the first place, but I was trying to see if the outfit that Corliss was wearing in the trailer was the same that he had on in the last episode of last season. And I don't think it is because what he had in the, on in the scene of the last season it was, I don't know, a robish sort of thing with this mm. gold pattern trim along the sides. It looks pretty similar to the trim along that chair. I don't know if it mm. makes any sense for Amon to go to Drift Mark or to meet with Corliss or anything, but I'm, I'm, I'm probably just wrong about this. But if I am right, I'll definitely point back to this moment and talk about how right I was. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all go to the same chair maker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Pier One Imports <laughs> <laughs> as of, has Targaryens as their customer. All right, let's uh, look on to the next shot here. We have High Towers on the March, and the, it's important to note High Towers on the March because of several things that we're going to see in this trailer, and one thing that I pointed out already. One thing I, that 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 last thing being that we see so much more of the new green and gold Targaryen outfit. That's sort of a fusion of as Ashea said, Sunfire, Aegon's dragon, as well as the Targaryen symbol, as well as the Hightower colors. It seems to be sort of a fusion of all those things. <coughs> Two large banners out front that are very much pure Hightower. There's no Targaryen banner. Although there could be because there's two banner bearers out front whose, sit, whose banners we can't see because they're too high. Also take a note of the banner bearer on the right. He's looking right at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so when we see, there's going to be lots of shots of troops in this trailer analysis that we do today. But what's interesting about this one is that it's A, only the high tower banner and none of the other banners and B, no other shields. So it's only high tower here, which we might be meant to think this is a high tower army marching to King's Landing to supplement the King or to just beef up their support but this could could be a rare example of a shot from later in the season where the high towers are um, sending an army from old town and this is marching like out of the reach uh there's a lot of potential there because all these other shots we see of armies are multi multi house like we see lots of different shields lots of different sigils so this one stands out even though it at first glance it could easily just fit in with the others but something tells me that this might be something else going on here and we'll have to keep an eye out for that. This is a this is a good candidate for a scene that might could have a dragon flying overhead. Maybe that's what the uh, banner bearer is actually looking at. <laughs> it would be a, a, clearly a dragon on their side because they don't look to be concerned at all. But anyway, I see spears and swords and shields, but also crossbows. So that's important because you didn't see nearly as many crossbows back in the time of game of thrones proper the tv show you definitely saw them but there's more call for them now because of dragons right something that crossbows have more piercing power than than longbows and you're piercing through heavier armor you're trying to get the rider and it's a, it's a tougher they're wearing the best armor possible so some of these more readily available bows that maybe are better in most cases are not better when you're fighting against dragons and dragon riders. So I kind of like that detail a lot. Crossbows are also more expensive. And yeah. I was taking note, these soldiers all have armor on. This is not a hastily gathered together militia of farmers with rakes. These are armored soldiers with crossbows. So this is a, and you know, I guess the high towers and the reach in general are wealthy. So they might have a, 
a better equipped army. Although yeah. it's not going to help them against dragon fire and they're slow moving that, you know, a bunch of dudes in armor walking. That's a slow moving army. Uh, next up, we have a good example of what I was saying. There's multiple shields here and these guys are more, obviously more of a mixed force. So the shields we see here are uh, the lamb there on that shield is uh Stokeworth. And the shield, the three chevrons on white with the, the flex behind it is Rosby. Both of those are Crownlands houses near King's Landing. That tells you a lot. Now you do see a helmet, a mounted man, and some green banners. But those green banners appear to be Aegon Sigil. Not Hightower banners, but this new Green's Dragon Sigil. But those helmets on that one, on those mounted men, do kind of look like the same Hightower style helmet. So this could be... I mean, you would expect to be some high tower men there, but you could see my confusion or guesstimating about why these shots are look a little different. But uh, this, these guys look a little more ready to actually go to war, <laughs> whereas the other ones are on the march for battle perhaps later. This looks like more imminent. Some of them look like they've already maybe been in a fight. The helmets are, some of them are a little scuffed or, yeah. Uh, the shields, shields look yeah. a little battered and dirty. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. These, these guys look like they've already seen some action. And it's a, and it's a mixed force of of army of infantry and cavalry as well. Next shot is Otto at the mantle. There's something very familiar about this. We've got a lot of <laughs> Otto reflecting on the fireplace. What have I done this time? Or what mistakes have I made? Or what mistake? Of course, he's he's not saying my mistakes. That's the other voice in the in the trailer. Is after the coronation of of Aegon, many mistakes were made or whatever. It's like, you mean by you? <laughs> He's just like trying to distance himself from it. But Sean, there's a peculiar thing that you might or might not have noticed or noticed the lack of. Where's that hand of the kingpin? I don't see it. Yeah, remember that uh, Rhaenyra took it off and threw it away and called him a maybe traitor. Maybe he just hasn't replaced it yet. It could just yeah. be that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is that. soon after. Maybe this is him right after his return to report that Rhaenyra is not taking our terms, you know. Yeah. And or he's just like, he gets back and he just reaches. He's like got a box full of hand. He's like, okay, I need another hand pin. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like a ready supply. He ordered a six pack from, from his uh, blacksmith or whatever. So, yeah, so he's uh, doing his politicking and speaking about mistakes were made. And I can imagine that Alicent is still very upset with him and is going to complain and rightfully so and criticize him. And he's going to prevaricate and say we had no choice and we'll, it'll all be OK. We've got moves we can make and this and that. And, yeah, I, I foresee many antagonistic conversations where she's is going after him and he's just backfooted because he really is in the wrong <laughs> most likely <laughs> uh the next shot is allison facing laris now this tells us very little because allison and laris of course they were having conversations but one thing to pay attention to always is what allison is wearing because it helps tell us what scene it is and when this is taking place notably Unlike almost every other shot we're going to see of her in this trailer, there are other exceptions, but most of the shots of her we're going to see in this trailer, she is wearing a mourning veil, which she's been wearing since last season because her husband has just died. So it makes sense to do that. The king, her husband, the king has just passed. So that actually makes it a little trickier <laughs> in some cases because she's wearing that mourning veil so often that it, it spans quite a few scenes. So it's not just like, oh, this is the scene with the mourning veil. Nope, there's, there's several scenes with the mourning veil. Uh, so that's about all I can glean from this one. She's got, she's holding a handkerchief maybe, which might be telling, but uh, not particularly telling. She looks a little grimaced in the face too, but I think that her being emotionally uneasy in a conversation with Laurie's is not particularly telling. That's yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah all the scenes are going to be like that. So yeah, he's, he makes her uncomfortable. I, I, he makes everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> like that's, that's kind of the point. Yeah. So I agree with you there. There's, her reaction doesn't tell us much, but it is, I do think the fact that she's not wearing her morning veil is a little interesting, but, but she's inside in her own quarters. It's, it's not like she's, uh, you know, rejecting it or something. Yeah, it's I, not I symbolic. Just, it's just, she's in her room. Yeah. I just, exactly. I wouldn't have expected her to be wearing it in her room at all. Yeah. So there's probably not much we can say about that. Uh, overhead shot of Allison is next. Blowing. This is her blowing out a candle. 
Now, by itself, that means very little, but I think this precedes a certain nighttime scene that is very spoilery that we will discuss in the spoilers section. So just a lead in to address this moment and also give Sean a chance to, to react to it if you have anything to say about this one. Not particularly. I, I imagine it is a, a, some sort of religious ceremony. You know, she's probably lighting candles at the... Yeah, at that's a good point. Whatever, you know. Yeah, it could be at the Sept or something like that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, next up, we have Rhaenyra seated and crowned. This is interesting. Very interesting scene here, even though it's, at first glance, it appears fairly ordinary. Well, we can take note of her dragon epaulets on her shoulders there. Those look really cool. And she's crowned. So this is probably, not probably, but almost certainly after she's returned from Storm's End because she's all cleaned up and is crowned again. And I doubt she took the time to put the crown on, get all cleaned up and then fly away in, in anger and, and, you know, and, and guilt or, uh, and, you know, the horror of losing her son and all that. So I don't think, uh, so I think this is much later. The background doesn't tell us very much. It looks Dragonstone-ish. It's dark and, and gloomy. It could be somewhere else, but it's hard to say. She's got a guard standing behind her there that that maybe tells us a little something, but not much. Uh, but her expression is not like traumatized or upset. And that's interesting, too. It's more of kind of a I'm listening or uh, what do you read from this expression? If anything. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. It's I feel like she is listening, although maybe with a hint of suspicion. I, I I feel like maybe she's telling someone something that they need to do and they're trying to give reasons why they're not going to do it. She's like, mm. you're not, are you sure? You mm. know, that's, that's kind of my take on this, but it's, it's hard to get too much, you know? Yeah. There may be, there may be a slight raised eyebrow there or yeah. a little bit of skepticism or something, but yeah, yeah. you're right. It's, I, I wouldn't read too much into this, but it is, it is interesting. Uh, definitely more composed and yeah I, i'm guessing this is dragonstone but yeah it could be somewhere else here's one that we're gonna have to discuss twice once now and once after the spoiler section not because i have definitive spoiler things to say about it but because i have some guesses but just looking at it it's odd so the throne first of all the throne's a little bit behind him here which is unusual but then the next shot i mean there's parts of the throne behind him there isn't that the throne or is that something else it's not okay. I'm I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, either it's, it's so not. Sc no, scratch, that. No, scratch that. He's looking forward at the throne. He's got a puzzled look on his face, and then it's kind of looks normal. But then a second later, boom! It like lights up, and that's not like medieval lighting. That's technology, or which tells us it's a dream. Almost certainly think this is a dream. Uh, I can't. It's hard to imagine it's anything else just because of this funny lighting moment. So, it, Aemond having a dream is that what we're seeing here? Not so fast. Just because Eamon is in it doesn't mean he's the dreamer. It could be someone else having a dream, seeing Eamon facing the throne. But certainly it's very possible that it is Eamon himself. So, Sean, what do you think? Dream sequence or did you read this somewhere some other way? I Honestly, I didn't think that deep about it when you pointed out it was a dream sequence. I thought it kind of made sense because it is a slightly weird perspective on Eamon. You know, his sort of like lean forward but I, I thought it might just be like lightning or maybe something. Okay, I don't know lightning. if it's possible. It doesn't look like lightning because it's I not mean, coming from the window. It is possible yeah. that it's lightning. It just really doesn't look like a well, a good effect of lightning, like which maybe is a mistake on their part because it really looks mm. unnatural. Yeah. The, the light is... looks like it's coming from the front or you know maybe a little from the side. Not. It doesn't look like it's coming through the window. Yeah, it looks like it's coming from above. It's, it's yeah. hitting its light from behind is hitting the window um but yeah, yeah honestly, sure i mean it could odd. be lighting and just i think ineffectually done like done poorly <laughs> to be frank yeah, yeah. um i like, think if that's lightning possible. i agree with you shay that's like, not well done <laughs> if it, yeah it, it could very well be lightning i think it looks very unnatural and eerie if so and we've seen them do lightning before and it didn't look like that that i can recall um so yeah so I, we'll, we'll we'll say lightning is a maybe but I'd, I'd be i'd be pretty surprised if that's what it is i also now, the image of Eamon, I can't figure out what that is behind him. It looks almost like some kind of something being built, some kind of wooden. Yeah, if it's not the frame, throne, what is it? Yeah, is it? Is it another statue being built? A... I saw people saying another statue was being built in the throne room because there had been stat, which makes sense because there had been there would Viserys be a statue of Viserys should be built. Oh yeah, yeah. So maybe it's that, there were maybe four it's... for the four kings before him. So that does fit, which makes it less dreamy if there's this, like, all these like 
mundane details of what would actually be in the room at the time, but certainly doesn't erase the possibility of it being a dream because that is what's happening in that moment. And there is certainly Eamon having that thing where he's like, look, if they come, if they come looking for me to sit the throne, I mean to be found, which is telling, <laughs> of course, as well. Mm -hmm. And that could be, you know, he's dreaming about sitting the throne himself or someone else is dreaming about him sitting the throne. He uh, might be dreaming about the cost of the throne. I mean, I, uh, I would like to think, especially the way they presented that scene with him and Luke. It was Luke that he killed, right? Or that his dragon yeah. killed. Yeah. He might be haunted by that, you know? Mm, yeah, he might be. Yeah, he may not. He probably won't show it, but we might see it in his moments when he's alone or with somebody that he trusts, yeah. if there is such a person. <laughs> I had that scene thought with that scene from Renera earlier, even though she looked composed, I bet as soon as she gets around a corner, she's shedding tears, you know? I bet yeah. that she's mm, struggling possibly. to keep herself composed. She knows she needs to for a bunch of reasons, but it still is not easy and just doesn't go away, you know? Well, we'll come back to this scene to discuss it in the second half while I'll discuss what I think who the dreamers might be apart from Amit himself. A March in the Snow is the next shot. This is the only scene that we probably have. Uh, nothing else that, that stands out is taking place seemingly in the north. We've got two torchbearers out front, a bunch of riders. Can't tell very much about them. But yeah, we know Jace was flying north. Uh, so and it's just, not winter and it's not that snowy. It's yeah. snowy, but it's not like overwhelming. Yeah, they're snowy. not deluged. Like there's not a lot of snow on the trees. The trees, like there's a lot yeah. plenty on the ground, but the snow isn't in the higher trees, but it is in the lower trees. That's a good observation. Shane. It's not on them either. It's not coming down mm -hmm. actively. It's not coating their shoulders. You know. Good point. Yeah. So the other small chance is that this is the veil, which may there might be some snow in the veil. Like we know, Lady Jane Aaron was cast. So I don't think we've seen her or the veil in the trailer. Maybe that other shot of the camp was. But anyway, this scene in the north might be a little later in the scene. This might be one of the farther out. This might be like an episode three or episode four thing. Because if Jace is stopping off at the veil, even if we don't see those scenes, there still would be some time passing before he gets to the north. So I don't think we have a whole lot to say about this scene because it reveals very little. And we knew something like this would happen. But it is you know, for completion's sake, we wanted to make sure we pointed to it and uh, say what we could. So here's a very interesting one. We have dragons and riders on beach. First off, we have Rhaenyra looking kind of, I don't know, uh, unsure, a little bit, maybe not hostile, but not friendly. And Cyrax is right behind her. So pretty clearly she's with her dragon. And then this shot of them Facing each other. Great, great shot. You got dragons in parallel. You got riders in parallel on the beach facing each other. Love this. This is more than we would have expected, given the dearth of dragons in the early trailers for season one. So this shows that they have made quite a bit of progress on, on post-production and, and showing some of this stuff. Do you uh, have an idea who that is, Sean, uh, on the silver dragon do you have a guess or did you look at our notes and and, and already know <laughs> he's talking you're muted he's, he's talking you're muted he can't hear me right now i'm muted we need to tell him you're muted sean you're muted sean sorry sorry <laughs> i don't i don't know who that is and i i hope that i'm not being made fun of for how naive i am but <laughs> i don't have a guess it's probably sea smoke lanor's dragon that's the only dragon we saw that looked like that of that color so okay. it's probably okay. who it is. it's obviously possible there's other dragons there is a dragon in canon called gray ghost um that's probably not gray ghost because gray ghost was a wild dragon but hey they make they could make changes right it's always possible i love the details You've got the different pot. The dragons have different postures. There's details in their, just their body type, like sea smoke, assuming that is sea smoke, has a spiky tail. Cyrax does not. Uh, the crest along their necks are different as well. So I, I just like the, the detail there. It's really nice. And of course, sea smoke and Cyrax would know each other really well. Yeah, good just, point. So they're know. not hostile to each other automatically. No, they might they be have... if their riders are, but this clearly isn't hot. This looks more like a meeting than. Yeah. Lane, or uh, if that's Lane or like um, Rhaenyra, it seems I don't know what word to use disturbed. She doesn't seem relieved or acceptant or things yeah. I might expect from meeting with Lane or so. Yeah. So the good chance it's not Lane or good point. Yeah. If it is, she would be like, why the hell are you back? You know, what are you doing here? <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. But maybe but there's still. maybe something is out of context where they're showing these images. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. 
she might be more shocked. This is after realizing who it is. Maybe she doesn't even know who it is yet. She's like, they haven't gotten close enough to each other to mm -hmm. tell. Like, on the other hand, like, if you look at it from the wide angle, yeah, he could be wearing head covering, but you can see her white hair, her platinum hair, and not whoever the other person's is. It might not even be a man, but it could be a head covering. But if it's not a head covering, this person doesn't have Lenore's hair color. So that's something. Um... Another shot, this time of Allison. Allison, uh, or not what? of Allison, sorry. Yeah, Might what? be Allison. <laughs> huh? We're guessing it is because this is uh, outside King's Landing. This is the Dragon Pit. So we're looking at. King's you mean Landing it might be Allison's Allison. perspective? Is that yeah, right? yes. like there's no Allison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, that's what I meant to say. Yes. Thank you for the correction. So we're not positive uh who this who this is point of view from our best guess is allison because there's a lot of possibilities though because it's it's king's landing just outside and there's obviously a lot of important characters around king's landing but it's interesting that we're just outside king's landing and not like inside it not at the red keep like there's no army in sight here so what kind of scene is taking place just outside king's landing without you know any fanfare apparent so that's that's interesting as well Uh, do you have any thoughts on this one, Sean? Or is it just, yeah, just, well, that's King's Landing. That's the Dragon Pit, all right. <laughs> that's the Red hey, Keep. It might be a, 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 a staging shot and not necessarily someone's perspective, but it might be an army cresting a hill, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could be. Or a dragon, maybe. Like, it's a bit of off the ground. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's... Yeah, it could easily be a drone or just a wide angle or the, the, the illusion of height. But, yeah, <laughs> that's something I always keep in mind. Like, any of these shots could be from Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the ones that are like indoors seated at a table, you know, <laughs> like those probably <laughs> aren't. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, we have soldiers emerging from forest, which these appear to be the same guys that we saw a raid with a little bit of battle wear. The ones from the Crownlands that we referred to earlier, we got some of the same helmets. If you look really closely, it's the two walking soldiers. They have shields on their back. These these kite shields. One of them appears to be a regular high tower sigil, and one appears to be the new green Targaryen uh, Aegon the Second sigil. So this throw, this is again making it very difficult to tell what's happening in some of these scenes because at one point I'm like, well, there's only high tower sigils in this one, and there's no high tower with the new green dragon sigil or yellow dragon sigil or golden dragon sigil, really. And this this one you have both, but you also have some of those other Crownland sigils. You see. Rosby and Darklin again. The 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 uh or not Rosby and Darklin again. You see Rosby again and Darklin for the first time. Darklin is the one with uh a quarter of its red going up and down, and the rest is white going up and down. And there's some, I guess there's stars on there. I forget. But either way, it's very distinct from the other the other ones. So also this is take note of a ladder in there, which makes me wonder if they're about to siege a castle. Good take. Yes, I agree. Not only are there are, are there ladders, but there's mantlets, which are portable wooden barriers that you approach a castle with when they're shooting at you with arrows, like a big wood, like a a shield, but like three times the size of a shield that multiple American carry, and then plant on the ground for temporary cover. So it's it sits on the ground rather than just a, a shield, which doesn't sit very well. So the, you're absolutely right, Sean. This looks like a castle taking squad. They've got all sorts of siege equipment, not siege equipment, but attack a castle like storm the walls type of gear there's no there's no trebuchets or catapults but there are ladders and mantlets which are a, a very very telling key set of equipment there as if to emphasize the war's potential in this region this next shot is pretty explicit we have Kristen cole smashing some dude with his helmet like bam dude take that i don't have my sword in hand well i still have this thing and it will still hurt you quite a bit so this is pretty clearly battle, <laughs> like, unless Kristen is just mad at somebody, which is possible. After all, we saw Damon beat someone with a yeah, helmet last season, yeah. <laughs> so we never know. However, I wonder if they might even try to draw a parallel between Kristen and Damon. Oh, that would be a good way to do it. Beating someone with your helmet, someone just for giving you news you don't like. That would be, yeah, I mean, that would be pretty blatant. But uh, yeah, that's a good call. The next shot is a horse and rider falling over with dust and smoke around. And there's several shots of Kristen Cole on a horse in this trailer. This could be him um, getting unhorsed. Which... I think it's him. I think it has his necklace. Oh, his necklace. But and I it does look like a white cloak, which yeah. he's probably the only guy with a white cloak in that whole army. 
So yeah, very telling. Uh, Kristen, it doesn't look like he's being like killed or anything, but knocked off his horse. You know, okay, well, I guess he's going to get knocked off his horse. Spoiler. <laughs> now here he is again, apparently, but still on his horse. But there's clearly like carnage and stuff happening. There's smoke. And in the next shot, you can see uh, a man being helped by another soldier. So yeah, like a wounded guy and there's no immediate fighting. It looks like all just his allied troops around him, but clearly there's battle either has just happened or battle is taking place close by. And here is probably the same battle or a subsequent battle or something related to this campaign. Cause once again, those shields tell the story. You've got that exact same Rosby shield on the ground there and probably a few others. Well, not that exact same, but that sigil. <laughs> no, it's the one shield that we've seen in a bunch of different <laughs> shows. So what this tells us is that that's probably a dragon and it's pretty clearly not on Kristen Cole's side because it's attacking the guys that he's been with. <laughs> So, which which all tracks to what we saw last season. The, the houses closest to King's Landing are the ones that are directly under the thumb of the new regime because they're so close by, right? It's hard to stand up to them when you're a smaller house and so close by to the action. So, yeah, that tells us a lot. What do you think, Sean? What does this say to you? I was trying to make out. It looks like there's an image of something being burned there. And I, I wonder yeah. if those are maybe sigils. You know, maybe like the staffs mm. that hold them and the cloths have been burned away or maybe it's some sort of siege equipment or something. But yeah, yeah, I agree. That is some sort of structure or something. It's not just like those aren't people. That's a that's a wooden thing. Yeah. Like maybe it's just a a, a like a. Yeah, a, I, would, like yeah a, I would guess there is burning the equipment that's be that, that would be used. That yeah. might be a cart. I see yeah, a wheel a cart, maybe yeah. in the corner. Oh, there, so. yeah. Good call. Yeah. But that would be yeah, it'd be a useful thing to burn all like their arrows, like a, a cart full of arrows or spears or maybe flammable material <laughs> that they were going to use as part of their storming. Uh, so yeah, uh, a lot of related stuff. The same shields, same here's this, almost certainly from even the same moment. Just someone getting knocked aside. This all feels very familiar to past dragon battles we've seen. You can like, see the wheel there again in this shot. And oh the arrow yeah. The wheel, you know. Good call. So it's probably a cart, which makes sense to target their, their equipment. Mm -hmm. Here's a shot of Amond, and he, in, in full motion, he banks left. Now, interestingly, we learned in A Dance with Dragons that dragons are not like horses. If you, you kick your left spur under the horse's left flank, it will turn right. Dragons don't work that way. You put your spur into the left flank, the dragon turns left. It goes towards the direction you tell it because dragons are aggressive. They're attacking animals, whereas horses are, you know, led and they run from danger unless they're trained otherwise. And this is something we learned directly from Danny's chapter when she's flying Drogon. So uh, that's just a fun little detail. Eamon turns left and the dragon goes left with him. Anything to say about Eamon in the sky here? Uh, it's not very telling, probably, as far as I can tell. You can hardly even see his clothes. But it might I'm, be the same outfit he's wearing when he was sitting in that chair. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's possible as part of the, if it was a dream earlier, those images, if this is also part of that. Oh, this could just be him returning home after, <laughs> but yeah. he's not wet. He got all wet in that one. So maybe not. He's not like drenched. Um, Although flying in a dragon, it might dry off pretty quick. It's hard to tell. Like that's true. It's not as far as wet and you can't see it, but that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, next up, we have maybe directly related Vagar flying over and Vagar is just so cool. <laughs> with the holes in her wings and just showing her age, but she is still just a sight. Look, you can barely see him on top, like from these sides, you can see him up there. Just, it really <laughs> lets us see just how large she is. I love it. Never yeah. get tired of seeing that. This appears to be related to that battle though. You've got the same kind of equipment. It's hard, harder to see the shield. So it's not a hundred percent sure, but. It's a forested you... area in the background. Yeah. We'll add that all up, Sean. We have pretty convincing evidence of a dragon against these soldiers, burning them. And now we have Vagar on the scene. So that really tells us there could be an actual dragon battle. Uh, not one by accident. Not one that Vagar went out of, you know, just did her own thing. Though maybe that could happen again, no doubt. Like if it happened once, it definitely could happen again. So what, does that suggest anything to you, Sean? Is that just, or is it just kind of ominous? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wondered if that was the dragon doing the burning, but maybe, especially because in that shot there, it looks like there's smoke underground. Those soldiers don't look the, like they're cowering away. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if maybe the dragon that was attacking him suddenly disappeared. 
you know, it's almost comedic sometimes when like the the small character is fighting a big character and a big character <laughs> runs off like, yeah, I fought them off. But then they realize, oh, wait, there's a bigger character behind me. That's what scared them off. So, OK, uh, next up, we have riders heading to the forest. This uh, not so sure about this one. It could be related to the Crownland scenes. Uh, it's hard to tell who those guys are, but one of them kind of looks like he's in white. So it could be Kristen Cole. And then this follow up shot where they're in the forest here. And that's almost certainly Kristen Cole or some other Kingsguard. But I have no idea what's happening because there's no army around here. So this could be something from prior to that campaign or even after it. Because well, where, no, where's uh, the yeah. rest of the army? You know, oh, no, here is that. Yeah, you've got the, the two riders next to each other. And in this shot back here, there's also two riders. Like, yeah, two two maybe those guys are chasing the other two. And they're going yeah. fast. They're racing. It looks like they're going yeah. as fast as they can. So that's important. Yeah. I, I wonder if maybe they're trying to deliver a message or, or oh. on some covert mission where they just need to move quick. It's not necessarily a battle. It's just they need to get from point A to point B fast, you know? Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm a little puzzled by this one. It, uh, by itself, it isn't terribly revealing. There's nothing I can think of from Fire and Blood that directly suggests it, but I could be missing something. So this is a good chance if, if y'all have any thoughts on this one, absolutely weigh in. Maybe they're writing to warn the army of the dragon that's coming for them. Yeah, this like is that. another one where I thought maybe this is a perspective from Dragonback. Not this shot that's on screen right now from inside the forest, but when they're running into the forest, like that could be from Dragonback, you know, someone pursuing them and they're trying to get into the forest to get away from a dragon. That doesn't necessarily ex explain why they're still racing once they get into the forest, though. So I'm guessing that's probably not it, but I thought it was... If you run into a forest to get away from a dragon, I would be really worried about that dragon torching that forest. I still think it's mm, better than just okay. being out in the open. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you do you in that situation, right that. but that is what I would expect. If a dragon chases you into a forest, I would expect... You don't just stop and go, ah, okay, we made it yeah, into yeah, the forest yeah, you now. Keep, yeah. <laughs> We're safe. Oh, okay. <laughs> Especially if you're all in white. Like You're like, ah, I wish I was wearing green right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... The fact that one of them is Kingsguard really makes me wonder because it seems like it could be Kristen Cole. But if it is Kristen Cole, then where's his army? Or Yeah, anyway, maybe it's before that. All right, next up, we have a Bracken man drawing a sword. A lot of people thought this was a woman in the trailers, which, you know, I mean, is a little bit feminine, but I think that's a guy. I didn't. I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. See, Sean, one example right there. <laughs> And this is the way the reason we know this is a Bracken person. You can barely see the sigil down there right on their chest. This could be a behind them. There are some wooden structures. It could be a windmill or a small wooden tower, but there's several structures. So it, it's kind of hard to tell. It may not be structures. It might be like wagons or I'm not sure what that is behind them. But Brackens are near ish to Harrenhal. Brackens have already declared for the greens. So it's not too hard to see that this would be a conflict in the Riverlands between perhaps the Brackens and Damon or the Brackens and the Blackwoods course the brackens and the blackwoods fighting each other is no surprise to anyone in any era <laughs> so that is you really can't consider that a spoiler but other than that i don't know what else we can really tell except that maybe battle's about to start like this person's drawing their sword there's people with them they aren't really fully dressed for battle though they're, they're not armored um so maybe they were caught well, by a surprise or maybe this is an ambush party or maybe they've been ambushed yeah Keep in mind, everyone, it's it's unique to have a bunch of soldiers in army and in, in mm, armor. Like everyone true. isn't quote unquote prepared for battle. Most soldiers, and especially in this time period, in this world, who get called up for battle, they're just farmers. They don't have yeah. armor and swords and all this stuff. They just they just need bodies on the field, you know. So well, these guys don't look like farmers. They look a little too well dressed to be farmers, but they look underdressed for for a pitched battle. So yeah, I'm a little yeah. like it might be they might be like ranging or like reconnaissance or scouts but they're not on horses though that's that's a problem but still i'm sure it'll become clear but you're right that they we the fact that they're not in heavy armor isn't necessarily all that telling no, think they, of the brotherhood without banners how many of those guys are armored up and plate mail, oh, yeah you know? only a few you're right only a few yeah. and and they were trying to get more armor <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's hard to hard to find but they okay. were a significant force you know so some yeah some some group of S you know, soldiers, characters from the Riverlands or wherever who are loyal to one group, they might make an, uh, a difference, you know, blocking carriages coming down the road or it's scouting out movements of the slow moving armored troops, like letting someone mm. else know, hey, they're at this location heading this direction, you know. Yeah. Next up, we have Damon swinging a sword and it looks like an execution pretty clearly. However, there's a weirwood behind him, which really low limits the number of places it could be. 
uh, quite possibly Harrenhal's Weirwood. He's not wearing his armor in this one. So he did find a squire, but he does have his microphone <laughs> dagger. <laughs> the microphone <laughs> dagger fully on display there. Did he offer this executed person a chance to speak into the microphone one last time before <laughs> being executed? So someone's in trouble. We also have a shot of Kristen Cole executing someone that we're going to discuss in the second half because we have some spoiler things to say about it. But this is quite possibly a parallel, like, like a, a moment that will happen next to each other within an episode. And by the way, I just suggested they might be trying to make a parallel of uh, Damon and Kristen, especially yep. because I, I know that like, uh, you know, I, I ham it up a little bit. I'm aware that Kristen is a villain of sorts in the books. I don't know the details, but if you could put yourself in my shoes watching the first season, it's not like he didn't do anything wrong. But if you list the things he did wrong compared to the things that Damon did wrong, yeah. it, the, the quantity and quality are significant. <laughs> Damon is way more a villain in the first season than Kristen. If you if you just watch the show, right? Yeah. So I, knowing that there's this sentiment out there to hate Kristen so much, he must be more villainous. Maybe they're trying to balance that out in the second season, and, and mm. you know. I don't know if they're necessarily going to peel back on Damon being villainous, but if they show Kristen being more like Damon, then it shows him being more like a villain, et cetera. So yeah. this is the second example of that, how that might be happening. So. And, and as usual, that is maybe the flagship uh, thing that differs between you and, and book readers is that is the opinion on Kristen Cole, which no, and you're right to point that out. Like I, I, I tend to agree in some ways <laughs> that Damon's doings in season one alone are arguably quite a lot worse than Cole. At least it's so that their the level of fandom is very uh, uneven. Okay, I will say I agree with that. I'm not a Damon fan or a Kristen Cole fan, so I I agree on its face um, with that. I will say, Dom in the chat said, Sean, I'm going to cancel you for these opinions. Possibly <laughs> Damon Targaryen, so I think he's biased. <laughs> yeah, you don't see many people cosplaying Kristen Cole. I mean, just, no, just off true. the top of my head, Damon choked his wife, <laughs> murdered his other wife, right? Just off the top of my head, Kristen, Kristen brutally murdered someone, but it was someone that, like, arguably was like spreading rumors about the royalty and he was trying to protect like I, maybe i'm stretching I don't think but he needs to stretch not. It. and it yeah, was just don't... an awful evil brutal murder well he's got one damon has at least two or three right damon beat to death that messenger like damon the yes. types of things chris well did, he, he didn't kill that guy sean he, he just beat him he didn't kill i him. mean maybe he didn't die but he's got brain damage he's not going back home to run the farm right like, <laughs> i don't even know if he has brain damage the guy had a helmet on but you're, but either way it was it was not it was a bad thing he to attacked do. it was very um, immoral yeah, yeah. So he attacked an innocent man yes that's <laughs> it's not i can't defend the act but maybe it wasn't quite as bad <laughs> and Kristen had no fun all season Kristen that's no fun. <laughs> I think that is some of That's... the difference here, Sean, is that people like to see a character kind of enjoy themselves or have fun with it. And yeah. Kristen is just kind of this like morally self-righteous, like hypocritical. Like he has fewer redeeming qualities. Yeah, he has fewer Damon redeeming has good qualities. qualities and lots of bad qualities. Kristen only has bad qualities. I guess you're right. Yeah, that <laughs> is so that's one way of looking at it. Anyway, let's I mean, not get stuck on that. Let's not get stuck yeah, on that. Let's yeah. move on from Kristen Cole. We'll have a separate Damon. episode for this. So. Yes, yes. We have lots of other lots more pertinent things to discuss at the moment so allison getting on a carriage here and looking very concerned again we have the confusing perspective of her always wearing that morning dress but you can see like peasants behind her maybe looking a little uh, they're staring and she's staring the other direction which means like there's things happening all around her which is absolutely clarified by a few other shots here that we have coming up which appears to be some sort of fighting or running in the streets, some sort of riot, maybe? Is that the sept nearby? My first thought that this might be happening right after the coronation, but I don't think so, because Allison's garb is different. The morning <laughs> headdress threw me off, but the rest of her outfit is different from what she wore to the coronation, so it's not that. Boy, here's a shot that shows us a man that is all ultimately doomed very much a dead man look at this guy he's grabbed <laughs> on to Alicent, and the only other people close by are three kings guard one of whom who has the meanest look on his face like the one facing the guy that dude has murder in his eyes he is ready <laughs> to chop this man to bits and he probably will <laughs> that guy is real screwed he really shouldn't have done that <laughs> whoever he is <laughs> it's worth saying there's been a lot of people who've been wondered about this one man in the riot who has like silver hair people have wondered if that's uh hugh hammer 
Yeah, it could be. I've had a few. Co- we've seen a few comments like that. If you, is it possible you just pre zoom in a little I'm on that guy? Trying to, but I have to like. So he much. doesn't look like a random nobody. It's a little odd that he would be in this moment like that. You know, Sean doesn't even know who Ulf is, so we won't clarify too much yet. But yeah, it would be a weird place for him the, to be. I could zoom in in the second half. I can't until I refresh it. Okay. Uh, but it could be, yeah. So we're very something to keep an eye on. That could be that. So th- I will say this is maybe also a slight spoiler. There is nothing I can think of that fits this moment in the book. This riot. There are some riots and, and upri- uprisings in King's Landing later in the story, but they sh- uh, like people being upset about things that happen, like the commoners getting upset. But this, I don't, I can't think of what this is. So maybe I'm just brain farting and missing something obvious. But we've been discussing this trailer for a week, and I haven't. Got nothing. I got nothing, y'all. So this might be some new show only scene. So uh very curious what that's what's going on. But quite clearly they're all related to the, this this ish riot ish thing. Now here's auto comforting Allison, which maybe this is right after this riot has just happened. On the other hand, there's plenty of things that Allison will be distressed about this mm-hmm. season, <laughs> you know, or that could cause her distress, you know, theoretically. So it maybe not very telling, but it's another one of these, like it could be, could relate to the moment where Otto was gazing into the fireplace. Cause, but that isn't very telling as we've said, cause he does seems to do that a lot, but there's a lot of Otto trying to convince Allison no that that no this is right actually <laughs> there's a lot of those moments in season one there'll probably be more of those in season two but what's changed is by the end of season two is she was I mean into season one is she was pushing back more often against his takes and making really good points like she had some really good lines that stood out some really good arguments back against him so now that she's more capable of meeting him on equal footing. She's not as young. She's not as meek as she had been when she was younger and under her father's thumb more, or her husband's thumb more and her father, her opinions are coming out. She's more, for, more willing to speak her mind. And, and she says really interesting things and makes a lot of good points. I'm looking forward to more of that and how their relationship goes. Otto is very few people like Otto. He's a good character, but like as far likable, eh, you know, you wouldn't want him as your dad probably or in your family at all, perhaps. But their relationship is obviously very important to how things will go. And like, Sean, what do you, do you have any thoughts on like deterioration or is she just going to have to go along with him because what choice does she have? Or is she going to push back or yeah. Any, any thoughts on that? Obviously you're kind of working with very little here, just pure guesswork, but still wanted to hear what you had to say about it. There might be a a little of, of that on both sides, like she's still going to be able to wield some power. And so she might yeah. do some things that Otto's like, oh, crap, I can't stop that, you know? Um, but I, I can also imagine that he, now that we're in this situation of war and maybe riots in the streets and everything else, some, some of his kind of cold takes, she might realize they're just correct. Even if it's cold, even if it makes me sick to my stomach, it is just what we have to do. I can imagine there being some moments like that. Yeah, maybe I, she my thoughts to are sacrifice a little of her ethics, given the yeah. expediency of, 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 of it's that or die or that or other people she yeah. likes dies or whatever. Uh, I wanted to back up a little bit, though, because I was thinking about how the those riots in the streets reminded me a little bit of the riots in uh, Game of Thrones, where mm-hmm. Sansa was almost captured and on and on. And um, yeah. that, correct me if I'm wrong, was over food. That was like the people upset. Because they were starving, right? Am yes. I remembering that right? Yes, you're right. And I don't know if this happens in the books, but another key piece of, again, it's on my mind because I just watched the episode last night, but Corliss kind of, when they're wondering if he's going to join them, he points out, he's like, by the way, you know, I got injured. I've been out of action for a minute, but we got the step zones and we can cut off trade into King's Landing. From the sea, but they have no ability to cut it off from land and they control the reach, which is where all the food is. So I'm not sure. I like where your your line of thinking here, but I'm not sure starvation works because of that factor. Again, like I don't know other things going on, but Damon's plan was to go to Harrenhal to cut King's Landing off from the West. If he did that, if that but not but not the reach, notably. Okay. Which is where the which is the point. Yeah. Uh but you might be right. I I mean they they it could expand beyond the that thinking they could target food shipments yeah it's possible or, or even if they don't but all the food that would have gone to the people instead is going to the armies 
maybe. So but we don't be. have we also don't have huge armies because of the nature of dragon battles. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's possible. It, it's 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 definitely possible. But I would guess there's another reason. Also, because it would might be more interesting if there's some other reason. But again, I don't know what it might be. So yeah, I don't have a great guess to replace yours. <laughs> <laughs> So the next two shots we are, sorry, the next shot we have is Allison gazing over the water, dressed in white. Very Lady of the Lake vibes. I'm not the only one to notice that, but look at her face. She's very like sad or reflective, like not, not looking happy. That's for sure. I wouldn't say it's grim, but it's, it could be grief. Let's just put it that way. And there's, you know, there's not very spoilery to say that there's going to be grief on both sides in the season. So <laughs> Uh, this is part of why I guessed that other scene might be Allison, the one of King's Landing from a distance, because Allison is look appears to be seeing King's Landing from a distance or looking out over the water. She probably hasn't traveled super far away from King's Landing, uh, especially not in this outfit, which looks, you know, not like she's dressed for court. It looks kind of like she's underdressed. And it could be a parallel to Rhaenyra gazing out over Shipbreaker Bay, which would happen. So maybe this is very early in the season. As we've already guessed, most of these are probably very early in the season. This could be episode one or two. Uh, if it's episode one, then it's almost certainly a parallel to Rainier gazing out of Shipbreaker Bay. But if it's later in the season, then uh, yeah, who knows? But we have some ideas over what she might be grieving over specifically, but we'll obviously save those for the second half. It is an odd outfit too, by the way, to, to be out and about. Like uh, it that. looks more yeah. like a gown or an undergarment. It than does. You know, I, and her so queenly I, raiment, like she's normally so like dressed for court, like it's a, such a yeah. I mean, big... it, it almost looks like she like took off her overcoat, like her over green, like she had like a green thing, and like she took it off yeah. there. Like, maybe that isn't what she left the castle in. Yeah, but or, or if she didn't. It also it, it also actually brings to mind the like colors, uh, the light blue kind of uh, dress that Allison wore when she was younger, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, Is this the first time we've seen her not in green since then? Like, it's been a while yeah. since we've seen her not in green. Ooh, that Good could be point. symbolic. Or it also, this might be part of a dream sequence. This might... This, oh, okay. Yeah. It seems like an odd visual on a multiple levels. So maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe it's not yeah. quote-unquote okay. real, you know? That's, that's viable. Yeah, that's viable. Next up, we have two... Um, we have a shot of the painted table. Ooh. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I just realized not just a dream sequence, it could be a vision, right? Sure, like a, sure, all these yeah. different things we're calling dreams might be more visions than dreams. And which, again, could I kind of mean them the same way, meaning, you know, but you're right to clarify. Yeah, because like yeah. when I when I say one, it could be either. But you're right to clarify. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dream slash vision. Totally. OK, uh, next up. Isn't it about our. Um... Yeah. We have Blood for Blood, the poster, and Fire to Fire, the poster. Oh, that's why you had that. Yeah, those were the that those that were the, was... the posters for the that have been making the rounds on social media to to indicate that the season is close, and they've got one of Allison and one of Rhaenyra. The interesting that Rhaenyra's has been liked way more times <laughs> on Instagram than Allison's. <laughs> <laughs> These two very like. There's no justice in this world. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Rainier, like Allison's looking like they, there's this gold tinge over the whole thing or golden red where there's definitely like motes of fire behind Rainier. Of course, there's flames there, but there's also it's also in the Allison one where she's wearing her full garb. That's that's the outfit she had on, I think, after the court at the coronation or at least closer to it. That headdress in particular. Yeah. It was like a, a bo like a, a more upscale version of her morning veil. <laughs> So, Sean, I hear you've been, uh, the last couple of episodes, you've mentioned this beverage you've been drinking, Magic Mind, and maybe we should uh, tell people what that is. <laughs> I've been drinking it, too. It's a small green shot-sized beverage that is a caffeine replacement, and it contains some other ingredients that help with focus and concentration and memory and things like that. And I've been really liking it. The, it tastes pretty good. I've tried a couple of different ways to drink it, like mixing it or drinking it straight as a shot. And I know you like to mix it with things, but you change your your mix quite a bit. How's it impacted your uh, your caffeine intake and things like that? Uh, I would say probably a little less. Just replacing that with caffeine, I would have had. Um, and uh, it's uh, you know, I, I I just like to mix the different things together anyway, and it fits really <laughs> well with the the naked drink. It's a similar green, uh, kind of a thick green uh, liquid. It, so it's like a similar color and texture. Then I've mixed like sparkling ice or whatever else into it also. 
and uh I, you know, I, I do, I want for my drinks to have th this right mix of like nutrients and sweetness, sweetness and carbonation or whatever. And, uh, and, uh, this magic mine, I think it's meant to be, it's kind of intense. I tasted it by itself and it's a little bit intense. It's like a matcha flavor, basically. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's delicious. I don't normally drink that sort of thing. And I don't normally drink caffeine at all, actually. So I could really tell a difference, um, putting it into my, nor my every, my, I, I mix it with like a juice, um, personally. And yeah, you're not a coffee drinker, so yeah, yeah, I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't even drink like soda. I don't drink tea normally. Um, so yeah, I could really tell a difference, um, especially as I took it, as I drank it day after day, um, multiple days in a row, like after three or four days in, I did feel that I was much more productive. And I'm one of those people who's always like, how much of it could be a placebo? Well, honestly, like whether it was a placebo effect or not, I was definitely more productive. <laughs> Yeah, and there is science behind this. <laughs> yeah. I've researched some of it. We don't have time to go through all of it today, but I will be talking about some of it in the future. There is substantial evidence on certain nootropics working this way, doing what Ashea is saying, and but they take a while to build up. You can't just get the effect necessarily after one day or two days. Now, some things you will, like the caffeine, that affects you right away. But natural caffeine, the, the amount in matcha is different than what you get in coffee. And matcha also has green tea leaf or matcha is green tea leaves and that contains a substance called catechins and catechins causes ca caffeine ab absorption to move slower so that cuts back on things like jitters and allows it to work over a longer period rather than all at once so it's more spread out the effect which is better you don't want just a big burst and then 30 minutes later you're crashing like that's how much work could you have possibly gotten done in that 30 <laughs> minutes but if something is spread out over two three four hours that's so much better. You get so much more done. You're not rushing anymore for one thing. So, so I like that. If you want to try it out yourself, we've got a special running right now. Magicmind.com slash Westeros is the site you want to check out. And you can get up to 50% off your subscription for the next 10 days. The, the date of this 10 day start depends on whether you're seeing it on live stream or on YouTube. So basically you just want to do it as quickly as possible, but the code is Westeros 20. Use the code Westeros 20 at magicmind.com Westeros for your first time off purchase or for your subscription to save quite a bit. And even, and even if it's after the 10 days, you'll still get 20% off of your, your one-time purchase. Yes. Yeah, so if you happen to be hearing this much later, which is entirely possible, and you've already missed that window fear not, you could still get a substantial discount. And what's more important is getting more work done, having better focus and things like that. That's probably more valuable than the discount, but hey, why not have both? So again- Yeah, I, I guess what we're gonna have more, we're gonna talk more about it in the future weeks. I have more to say, so uh, hopefully you don't get tired of it. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll start you off there and leave it for now, but we'll have more to say about Magic Mind. We're pretty excited about this drink, but for now, yeah, go to magicmind.com slash Westeros and- uh, Start. I'll, I'll probably start I'll probably boosting have, yourself. I'll probably have more to say also, but fifty percent off is no joke. Anything ever fifty percent off, you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, just two quick notes before Sean says adios because we're going to talk spoilers. One of them is just I wanted to throw out a quick update on some of the other projects that are happening. Not our projects, but HBO's projects or George R. R. Martin's projects. There was an update on the Heron Hall stage play from directly from George's blog. He says it's now being called the Iron Throne, which that is also not necessarily the final title. Either way, whether it's called Heron Hall or the Iron Throne, not that important. The point is, it's a stage production of the tournament at Heron Hall prior to Robert's Rebellion, which is one of the most interesting events just before uh, the, the rebellion broke out. A lot of questions, a lot of mysteries there. So I presume that this stage play will answer a lot of those questions it might create some new questions as well but it should answer a lot of these questions that we've had for 20 plus years because well that's how long we've had questions since that's how long the series has been around <laughs> so that george says it might be out by the end of 2024 but don't ever listen to george's estimates on when things are coming out so <laughs> <laughs> it's probably more like 2025 but it will be you know broadway i guess or off broadway i'm not sure probably pretty pretty major production considering it's a game of thrones thing so but right now there's there's no need to be looking around for dates or anything like that but there that time will come also night of the seven kingdoms has uh begun casting there's been several casting calls dunk himself there's a big casting call going out for dunk and another one for egg and a couple other characters so that's fun uh, it's making progress we look forward to the day when 
we are seeing a Game of Thrones show every year. I mean, we're alternating years with Dunkin' Egg and, and House of the Dragon or something else. And we're almost there, folks. It's not too far in the distance where we'll have a lot. Rather than every two years or so, we'll have one every year, which is a pretty good, pretty good pace. You know, we don't need to go quite as we don't need to go as often as Star Wars does, even though I absorb all mm -hmm. those shows. But more than every two years or three years is, is good. <laughs> I wonder when the next book comes out, if that might like up it to more than one a year. It might. It might. That'll The, the next book will certainly push a put a, a, a jolt into the fandom. That's for sure. OK, Sean, I guess that's uh, time for us to say goodbye to you for now. Thanks for your great input. And uh, too bad we had some technical difficulties today, but we got through them. It's, uh, it happens. That's the Internet for you. We're going to discuss some cast members with known roles. Now, this isn't necessarily a complete list because there's a few that would have escaped notice. There's surely some roles that didn't make this list. But what we know, Amanda Collin is Jane Aaron. So Jane Aaron's in there, as I mentioned earlier. We have Alan of Hall by Abu Bakar Salim. Those two both were on the show Raised by Wolves. They're both we, major actors. Okay. In it, so that's kind of neat. We have Clinton Liberty as Adam of Hall. So we have Adam and Alan both cast. There was maybe some consternation over whether they would actually use both of them when they certainly have. So that's that's good. No worries there. However, they both appear to be significantly older actors than Adam and Alan are in the book. So that could be meaningful. My guess is that they're just going to do away with any suggestion that they might have been Lanors. And they're just older. They're just not going to bother with the controversy that's in Fire and Blood saying whether these are actually Lanor's kids or or the Sea Snake's kids. They might just come right out and say they're the Sea Snake's kids, which would make sense. Uh, there might be some other way they could handle it, too. But I'm pretty sure they're not going to do that. These are Lanor's bastards angle because of these guys' ages. I think these are these these two might even be older than. Oh, I forget his name. than the actor who played Lanor. Either way. John McMillan. What's that? John McMillan. John McMillan. Yeah. Lanor. So, or at least they're around the same age. So it wouldn't well, really I mean, work. We already have that ridiculousness because we have like Eamon and Aegon and Allison and Kristen who are all way too close in age. <laughs> it's yeah. like ludicrous. Yeah. But anyways. So we can't completely discount that possibility, but it, I think they would cast younger people if they were trying to make these guys more towards their book age. But other than that, I, that doesn't mean we would, I would, I don't assume any other changes to their characters just based on that, based on the age. Uh, so we'll see about that. We have Gail Rankin as Alice Rivers, who really has an ageless look, which is like you look at this picture of her and I'm like, I have no idea how old this person is other than she's not like 12 and she's not like 50, you know, <laughs> so that's pretty good for uh, the character. Alice Rivers should be kind of ageless looking. And in the book, we're not supposed to be sure how old she is. It's debated how old she is. And some people think she's quite old and some people think she uses magic to make herself look younger. So this is very exciting. I'm curious how they're going to portray her, but I think they're going to lean into it a lot because the show is a little lighter on mystical stuff. And unlike D and D's uh, show running style, they want to get into the mystical stuff more. They seem to, they like it and they know that we like it. Unlike those guys. I'll say, I love Gail Rankin and glow. She was really good. Nice. Um, she was the she wolf. So she was a <laughs> funny. Character. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she wolf. That's funny. Yeah. She was kind of like, a. she was a furry in the eighties kind of like, <laughs> she, had, she, had, she kin to wolves. So. But yeah. <laughs> Kieran Kieran Bu, I'm probably maybe not saying his name right, uh, as Hugh Hammer. So we have a Hugh Hammer, not surprising, large man, most likely. We can't really tell from this picture, but given he's the son of a blacksmith and a huge man, he's probably pretty big. Oftentimes they don't quite get the same size of, a, of the character in, in the show, but, you know, I bet he's a large guy. We'll see what happens there with him. We'll probably still wind up with Vermithor, who we saw Damon singing to at the end of last season. Freddie Fox is Gwen Hightower. Technically, Gwen Hightower was already in the show, but he had his helmet on the whole time and didn't say a line. So he was just some guy in the joust in episode one, and he hasn't been seen since. Now he's actually going to have lines and discussions. And, and let me say, yeah. we are excited for Freddie Fox as Gwen Hightower because he is King Hugo in the show The Great, and he is really funny. He's very, very funny. I expect him to have some really good lines in this show, like very snarky. Uh, yeah, I, I would be surprised if he didn't have some good humor. Yeah, I would be too, given like 
maybe Freddie Fox is just really good at playing these other roles, but you cast a guy who's shown such comedic chops, you think you might want to use that. You might think that would be part of the point. So I, I like your theory there. He's going to be snarky or like a uppity rich guy that yeah. knows he can say some things and get away with it. Yeah, Maybe yeah, like vaguely Olena vibes, even though he's a young man instead of an. And of course, but he's this... the heir to the high tower, or not the heir to the high tower. He's the heir to, to Otto. So he's he's not the heir to the high tower, but he's a uh, he's high very highly ranked. And of course, this is Allison's brother. But the other funny thing here is that uh, Freddie Fox is the son of the actress who played Jocelyn Redwine, as in the woman that had. Uh, the tiny, the, the pug dog in season one. That's his mom, his real life mom. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I like it when they do that. <laughs> now in this thing you see on screen, it actually says he's the heir to High Tower of Old Town, which doesn't make sense because why would he be the heir when his father Otto is exists and his father's not is not the lord of old town his brother hobert yeah is. so maybe he becomes the See, heir I, to old I, I, town? I would guess that maybe redanian intelligence just got that wrong yeah they probably they just, just like got that filled wrong. in a blank there yeah I, I don't know uh about that now we have uh robert rhodes as silver dennis silver dennis if you recall from the books is a guy who tries to tame sheep stealer and dies in the attempt so this character clearly won't be around very much this guy has real like uh like british punk band vibes from his yeah, there, yeah he does. He? <laughs> so he's got, like, he the been... fur is it the fur and like the scarring and like the white hair yeah yeah he could have so... been in the original mad max films i think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the new ones the old ones yeah <laughs> with matt with uh with uh mel gibson sam c wilson as blood okay so blood and cheese are of course episode one and we know that because it's called a son for a son the episode <laughs> yeah well what, what else could that possibly mean y'all if you've read fire and blood you know one thing about this guy sam wilson he looks so much like kyle foster uh you know um our friend uh from, who used to cover game of thrones and now covers lots of other things on his channel he looks so much like kyle it's, it's wild so he's going to be blood and he's going to be with cheese who is mark Stobbert. you can see on screen now uh i don't know either of these guys from from prior work but they're obviously going to have a pretty small role anyway a small but memorable role yikes wow we're really this people are going to really react to that one simon russell beale as simon strong how about that this guy gets to keep his real name <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's the great uncle to Larry Strong, so he might. Uh, who knows what he thinks of Larry? So that could be very interesting. Like this guy weighing in, like, yeah, oh, he killed my, he killed everyone, or he, yeah, Larry is going to be maybe quite a polarizing figure. So I'm very curious if Simon Strong is going to be like on his side, or thinks he's a jerk, or thinks he's a murderer, or kinslayer, or who knows? Like this, Simon Strong is in the books, but he doesn't do a whole lot. Other than Damon executes him or Eamon executes him. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that might be how it goes here as well. Tom Taylor is Craig and Stark. Look at how young that guy looks. That's because Craig and Stark is really young. He's been in The Last Kingdom, which is neat. Eamon has also been in The Last Kingdom and so has uh, Helena. Uh, and in real life, apparently, Jason and and tom taylor or so jace i'm calling him jace yeah harry collette harry collette and tom taylor are like buddies now like they went on vacation together yeah look at that yeah. so they're getting along well that's cool yeah <laughs> which um i just gotta throw it out there it's a pretty popular ship in the in like the fandom yeah, like nice. <laughs> uh jace cragen is currently like pretty popular i expect to get more popular when the show airs i I'm guessing that the actors can't ignore their comments and that they've, <laughs> I, I'm guessing the actors are familiar with that is all right I'm on. saying is that I, I think they know that whether bromance or romance, they know that people like Jace and Craig in together. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you didn't know that, but it is the thing. Next up is Tom Bennett as Ulf the White. We, uh, it's hard to tell if this guy is the same guy in that one shot because um, he would have had a beard and long hair added. So it's really it, it's pretty difficult to be able to tell whether there's the same people. But we do have a nice shot of uh, him from his Instagram. Yeah, we're in the old uh, green Tom Bennett. Yeah, <laughs> he was pretty happy to uh, be in the show. Yeah. Uh, then we have Stephen Pacey as Gunthor Darklin. Uh, Gunthor Darklin is the Lord of Duskendale. 
So that means he's going to have his head chopped off by Kristen Cole very early in the season. So <laughs> there's, in fact, a trailer shot of that exact thing happening that we'll see shortly. Uh, I don't suppose his role is very large <laughs> because of that. Vincent Regan is Sir Rickard Thorne. That is a Kingsguard knight, I believe. Um, it says he will portray Sir Rickard Thorne. It doesn't say what his role is. Yeah, it does it's say a Kingsguard. Kingsguard. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure about that. Good to see clarification there. So he's probably one of the guys in that scene that we see uh, Allison being grabbed as. Because you could see those guys behind their helmets. He does kind of look, look like men. Alistair Thorne. He does kind of look like Alistair Thorne. Oh, it's you're an ancestor, oh, okay. you, know, or, you know, or, or like a relative, but like yeah. I kind of do see it, like That's in terms cool. of like the casting. That's neat. Yeah, good call. <laughs> uh, Archie Barnes as Oscar Tully. Interesting that Oscar Tully is going to be cast already. Uh, and this is a very young man. So Oscar Tully might actually, whereas we have some characters that might be older, like the Hull, the Adam and Allen, this one might be younger. This is a very young man, like from his picture. Uh, we have Oscar Eskenazi as Joffrey Valarian. Why couldn't Oscar play Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> That's confusing. <laughs> so Joffrey has been recast because Joffrey was just a little little baby boy there. Now he's a little older boy. I imagine this one's going to have lines, whereas the other one did not. Jamie Kenna is Alfred Broom. Alfred Broom is the Castellan of Dragonstone. And if you recall, he switches sides. <laughs> so, <mer. laughs> Uh, I don't think I know him from anything, but uh, we'll be seeing him. Daniel Fathers is Humphrey Lefford. Uh, Leffords. I don't recall the Leffords being a big part of the book. So I guess he's just going to be riding to war alongside Jason Lannister, which is good news because we weren't sure how much of the Western lands campaign would get shown. The fact that they're casting lords who are part of it means it's getting shown. So that's right. this is very good news, even though the character Humphrey Lefford himself, probably not a big deal. What it indicates is i'm like frothing at the mouth for jason to die and us to see johanna <laughs> yeah, yeah give us Get that him out of the way we have john paul hurley as lord Derry. so the dairy obviously that's going to be part of the riverlands campaign in some way or another so it's interesting we'll see him we have anna francolini as lady malister the malisters are fairly important but not huge so that's pretty cool there's also going to be jorah malister according to this blurb here so no, it's, well, it says they don't know Oh, it says, or will, that. it says, will she replace Jorah or oh, will there oh, also be a Jorah? Yeah. Okay, so there might, yeah, she may have replaced Jorah. That's fine either yeah. way. Uh, but this is very interesting. We're getting so many of these river lords or river ladies in this case, which is, uh, not, I would not have expected. I would have expected a lot of these things to be cut for time. Barney Fishwick is Martin Rain, an actor from House Rain. Again, more evidence of stuff in the West. And that's pretty cool. Talk Stephen as Eddard Waters. I have no idea who this is. <laughs> Eddard Waters. That's. I was kind of guessing. I was like, maybe, maybe there's like another more dragon seeds or something. I'm too. guessing. Yeah. Cause there's more dragon seeds in the book than are actually named. Yeah. So they're probably giving some of them names or at least. Yeah. Maybe yeah, that's my, my best guess there. Um, I also like, we, we, I know that like in the scenes with the, like, this is a water. So there's someone from the crown lands, but I think it's notable that in the high tower, uh, army scene, like there's multiple black soldiers and stuff yeah. like that too. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I, but I, I, but again, I don't think this is a, uh, this isn't a reachman bastard. So no. And we have Ralph Davis as Leon Estermont, who we, they're putting in the same category as maybe just some other dragon seed. You know, we don't know, uh, cause there's no Leon Estermont in the books. Sarah Woodward as Lady Serena. This is, we don't know who Lady Serena is, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I like the Canadian intelligence rightfully points out that there is one other character named Serena in all of the books, and it's just a Serena Stark, who is much later, just in terms of like, it is a name in the series, but not a common name. They might want to fill out the court at Winterfell. The suggestion is that this is a Stark or someone who's at in the North, which is as yeah. good a guess as any, I suppose. There will be just ran other people yeah. up there, and they'll yeah. have to have names. I yeah. doubt there'll be no women at Winterfell, so yeah. like, that's Craig a good could guess. have a mother that's around that's lady sir yeah. like it could be his mom i don't know next yeah. up is turlock convery as lord mooton so uh, another lord mooton another river lord who doesn't necessarily have a, a huge role in the book but does have at this point but later does because remember damon and nettles scenes happen under the roof of lord maidenpool so i guess they maybe just want to introduce this character a little earlier to set up that maybe uncomfortable stuff that comes later even though Unfortunately, Nettles is not on this list, so Nettles might not be cast, but that doesn't mean those scenes won't happen. They might be done with Bela instead, which 
would at least remove the ambiguity of whether Bela slash Nettles is a lover of Damon or a daughter. Well, if it's Bela taking Nettles' scenes, it's pretty clearly daughter. I mean, that, that part's resolved. More on that later. Graham McKnight as Paxter Strong. Another one that we're like, who? Paxter Strong? But almost certainly another Strong. We're told Eamon executes a lot of Strongs when he takes Heron Hall. Yeah. So they got to have more Strongs. Filling out the Strongs. Yeah, yeah. got to fill out the Strongs. James Doherty as Clay? Clay. Just Clay. Yeah. <laughs> C-L-E-Y. No idea who Clay yeah. is. <laughs> that is no... This is the least we could say about a character yeah. on this list, probably, because he doesn't even have a last name. Nothing about him suggests what region he'll be from. Yeah, it doesn't have a sir or a lord. Yeah, no idea. Yeah, we're getting down to... I don't know how much we need to go through each person. The rest here. of these we can probably skip, because some of these are just like... Squire, Stark crofter, captain, or yeah, know. crofter, some dude's Fisherman. rat catcher woman. Yeah, yeah I don't think there's too many of these to go, go through them all, through so them. yeah, that's a good yeah, place like, to... Mo- no- I'll go through them quickly to say some notable things. Uh, Nicola Wright as rat catcher woman. Well, Blood and Cheese replaced the rat catchers, so she's probably not going to do too well. Yeah, she'll uh, probably get killed. Guess. She'll probably get killed by Aegon when Aegon kills all the rat cats. Yeah, so. and then and then yeah, so that's related to the blood and cheese thing. We got a servant, apprentice, and then we have some child actors here. Like they said, they they cast Jaehaerys Targaryen and Jaehaerys Targaryen. Um, but notable is some unknown people here. Um, Ed Eddie Eyre is back. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Eyre played uh, the s- not. Sir Arthur, but the Gerald other Hightower. night, Gerald Hightower at the Tower yeah. Joy scene on Game of Thrones. Yeah, they said it's they were as they said it's fitting if he was a Hightower again, or if a Kingsguard, yeah, or both, yeah, or, yeah, or anything, <laughs> or yeah. And then this Couldn't is my both. favorite person on there, Scroobius Pip. There's a man named Scroobius Pip. What a name! He, he's playing just like uh, a herald for like a funeral p- procession. Okay. Um, uh, we saw him on the on the scene. We don't know that, that character doesn't need a name. Um, same with some people here interesting just like mysterious woman that we don't know um same just some women again if we don't know like is someone sarah snow yeah well, someone sarah parker snow LePain, or... right here could be sarah snow i don't think so i don't know that i i, I don't know what i think but now, here's if... a guy whose name could be his act his character's name roderick hill that could be a character <laughs> but it's, it's the actor's name <laughs> he's not a western bastard oh, yeah i would say in terms of like the unknown actors the only real option for unknown actress to be sarah snow would be this parker chick but it's gotta I... be someone so maybe that's the best bet though, yeah right? if she's cast if she's not cast like if she's not a thing then oh yeah you're then, right they might you know, do away with that they, if possible. they do away with it then there's no one okay and here's the other really exciting thing for me Samson Kayo, Kayo, which is this is Oluwande Budhari from Our Flag Means Death. One of my favorite characters in Our Flag Means Death. I love Oluwande, and I don't expect him to be a major role, but he, he's he's delightful, delightful yeah. actor. Yeah, so he'll um, be in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess yeah, this Erica Ford, she could be a Sarah Snow too, I suppose. She's young and like, that could be her. It could be hmm. her. There's a couple unknown actresses, I guess. Uh, Matthew Couchman. <laughs> Sarah Head, an older woman. Right, let's move back to the trailer okay. shots. We're, we're into the weeds here now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So please don't move forward yet, though. Okay. You need to wait for me to have it up, unfortunately, as it gotcha. is with how this goes. Um, just uh, maybe I should just do this version of them rather than. I'll just put it on screen like that. How's that. So we have the painted table. But first, before the painted table, we want to read you guys a quote from George R. R. Martin's latest blog post. Okay, I need to get to where you are. Okay. The highlight of the trip, though, had to be the sneak preview that Ryan gave me of the first two episodes of House of the Dragon Season 2. Rough cuts, of course. Of course, I am hardly objective when talking about anything based on my own work. But I have to say, I thought both episodes were just great. And they are not even finished yet. Dark, mind you. Very dark. They may make you cry. I did not cry myself, but one of my friends did. Powerful, emotional, gut-wrenching, heart-rending. Just the sort of thing I like. (laughs) What can I say? I was weaned on Shakespeare and loved the tragedies and history plays best of all. Yep. So first two episodes, of course, it's going to include Blood and Cheese. It's going to include probably Eric and Arik, uh, which is an immediate response. Once Kristen Cole has handed the reins, once he's made hand, it's one of the first things he does. So probably the other really heartrending thing that happens, but also their reactions to it, just the mother's reactions to losing children and things like that. 
Helena's reaction, obviously, she's the mother. Obviously, Allison is the grandmother of of uh, Jahara or Jaharis, whichever one of them is going to die. It might, you know, it won't be it won't be male or either way, but male or might not be included. So they might be the split might be between Jaharis and Jahara instead of Maelor and Jaharis, which I don't think that makes much of a difference. I mean, you've still got this. The trauma is not going to be any lighter because of that. I mean, it's not going to be any less meaningful because it's a girl. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, the fact that George hasn't seen the whole series yet is also interesting. They, they aren't ready to show him yet. But also backs up what we're saying about these scenes and where they're coming from. It's unlikely that they've got a lot of scenes to show from later in the season if George has only seen rough cuts of the first two episodes. So. Yeah, I would. That would make you guess that these are mostly the first two episodes, three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Of maybe course, even... it's only an eight episode season. Is also yeah, worth saying. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm guessing the Battle of Rook's Rest is episode three or four, which is a good mid kind of mid season climax. And uh, it's a little too early to expect it would be season episode two, but it, it could be theoretically. I, I'm guessing episode three though. We don't have episode titles except for one or two of them, so that doesn't help us figure that out any. Uh, so in this scene here. What I, I believe we're seeing something that's later than the reaction to Luceris because of everybody's posture and where they're standing. But the fact that Eric is still there means it can't be too much later because he'll be dead, you know, within a few episodes, probably by episode two, maybe by episode three. And certainly by but by the end of the end, by the end of the season, that none of the four people in this uh, picture except Rhaenyra will be even at Dragonstone most likely. Rhaenys will probably be dead. Eric will probably be dead, and Damon will be in the Riverlands. So, yeah, this is almost certainly like an episode three thing, I would guess, or two. Um, I really don't think it's episode four. So really narrowed down there. We have Corlys at the painted table next with a maybe maybe it's just a trick of the light, but the lighting looks pretty different here in this moment. I'm guessing this is later as well, because this is not the outfit he was wearing in the scene where Rainier gets the news. So it's another, probably later in the season, not the moment where the news of Luke's death comes, which though we, we need to be aware. Yeah. We're focused on Rainier's reaction to Luke's death. Corley's would have a strong reaction. Rainier's would have a strong reaction. A lot of people are going to have very strong reactions to Luke's death, not just Rainier, including Jace in the North when he finds out. So some of these shots might be the yeah, reason would, they might have certain looks on their faces is because they're processing it. And we would expect Corlys is, we've seen him be the closest to, to Luke of, of, the, of the younger generation yeah. of kids. As totally, we saw, we, he had a scene with Luke where he was, you know, prepping him to take over or whatever. So took yeah. Took him aside and yeah, um, gave him so a yeah, talking I, to. Yeah. I would expect Corlys to be hit more, harder than the average other family member here. Yeah, and he's going to talk about kind of hard than, time. I expect harder than Damon. <laughs> he's, yeah, Damon is taking it uh angrily rather than in grief yeah uh but he's also he was already mad too <laughs> he's mad about his brother and everything so yeah Corlys is gonna have a hard time of it this season not not as bad as some other people who are who are actually gonna die but he's gonna lose rainies he's gonna lose luke he might lose jace at the end of the season that's depends kind of up to up in the air <laughs> literally whether jace will will die this season so we're gonna see Corlys in grief many times and that is gonna lead to presumably adam and alan stuff like that will pivot to Maybe that emerging, yeah, at some and, point, and we'll see him. I mean, feel such guilt over Adam and Alan, and such, you know, because it'll time with Rainey's being dead and he's betraying her memory, and yeah, he'll have some pretty conflicted feelings. I think in this shot, it looks like he's still wearing like his sleeping robe or something, but he's sitting in a chair, like he's just kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure, but yeah. So I think grief is a very good guess here. Speaking of grief, oh boy, Helena with a dagger to her neck. There we go. That's quite clearly uh, blood or cheese. I forget which one that is. Doesn't really matter. And Maylor, it, like I said about Maylor, it is part. He is part of the opening credits, like Daron. Like there, he's featured as like a little spoke. But that doesn't. We haven't seen him yet, so we don't know whether they're gonna use him for this. So it's pretty clear what that's. So you said that is blood. Yeah, that's blood. This one looks like Kyle, right? Blood's the one. That yeah, looks like I just Kyle. have a bigger, a bigger beard. Yeah, I yeah. guess that's blood. Yeah, cheese looks more like a, a a rat to me. A little thinner, yeah, thinner face. Yeah, okay, yeah. good call. Uh, next is Helena with a veil. This one threw me at first because the veil kind of throws off like what's going on with her face. I thought it was somebody else at first, but it's a mourning veil, which of course makes so much sense. This is there's ashes floating around. There might be having a should a, I a funeral pyre? Should I show the shot of them on the carriage? Sure. 
this is from filming and you can see the veil a better shot yeah a bit it's from, from both. yeah it's a little funny because in one moment there ellison's having a good time which yeah. i'm sure you could tell it's a, yeah. a set photo because she wouldn't be smiling at, at her granddaughter's funeral or grandson's funeral <laughs> so I pulled another quote just to remind us of what we're dealing with here and to connect us again to who's involved. Un Unbeknownst to King Aegon, the Hand, or the Queen Dowager, he had allies at court as well, even on the Green Council. And one other go-between, a special friend he trusted utterly, who knew the wine sinks and rat pits that festered in the shadow of the Red Keep, as well as Damon himself once had, and moved easily through the shadows of the city. As it turns out, Mazaria has an additional reason to hate the Greens that she didn't have in the books, if not several reasons. One is this new angle to her, which is that she's concerned with the treatment of, of the lowest of the low commoners and the fighting pits, the underground fighting pits that she wants to see closed. But they burned her bar, her place of business, which honestly her letting them know where it was wasn't the best play but that's also why we can be pretty sure she wasn't there she's probably not dumb enough to have been trapped inside her own burning building knowing when she know when the greens know where it is uh however it's possible they've just done away with this character entirely i would be disappointed with that but yeah we'll see we saw so much set up for this in some ways at least we thought it was set up because of so many rats that were just everywhere around so many different scenes rats would just appear like hey there's rats again is this blood and cheese set up or is this something else or is it multiple symbolism either way in the book, we don't actually hear much from Aegon regarding blood and cheese. Like the emotional reaction to blood and cheese on the green side is pretty muted because it's a history book and that's not stuff isn't as recorded. We do know that Aegon gets upset. Of course he does, even though he's, you know, what he is. He's still angry. Uh, he's not so far gone that he's not upset about the death of his child, although maybe it's more about what it says about their security measures and and how safe he is either way this is the first thing that shakes his unearned confidence to be fair other people gave him this comp told him it would go really well so in the book the death of the, the death of his child is what shakes him loose and realizes oh we're not just going to win automatically are we i've been lied to and that's what gets him more paranoid more drunk more enraged and what leads to him firing auto very early on uh, so these all come very close together it's blood and cheese as awful and traumatic as it is it really does have a huge impact on the greens like as far as an e effective tool in war it, it worked uh, i hate to admit it <laughs> but yeah it, it screwed them up big time it like caused a lot of internal struggles that made them cause them to make a lot of very bad decisions not that they might not have made those bad decisions anyway but hey Certainly was bad because of this. This also is when there start to be problems in the reach because of the poor leadership, because of mistakes were made, because the blacks aren't just rolling over. Other houses start to appear and take the black side, and notably some of whom are in the reach, some of whom are right around the high tower, such as the Beesberries, who were understandably upset that Kristen Cole killed Lord Lyman. Uh, as of the end of the season they probably don't even know that yet they probably don't even know lyman's dead let alone who did it but they're gonna find out and that's gonna cause problems now it may not happen till next season a lot of that may not happen till next season because we were going through all those castings no yeah there was lots of westerners and more riverlanders than we thought which means there's gonna really be a lot of emphasis there which in a way i'm surprised by in a way i'm not because that's where damon is mm -hmm. that's his theater of war so it's like okay well they're focusing on damon's theater war that part makes a lot of sense but anyway and that's when also when the Tyrells say they're not in. They're like, we're out. The Tyrells say, actually, we're done. We're not taking part in this war at all. So at this point, the Tyrells are still nominally on the high tower side, which is like uh, something they're counting on. But nope, they won't have that. This procession in the street is, of course, related to the funeral. You can very dimly see Alicent and Helena in the back of, of a carriage far in the distance behind this procession of these beaten drums. So it's pretty straightforward as far as what's happening here. They're they're grieving. They're marching through the streets there. Now this, this beach and this three small craft, I got no idea what this is. This doesn't tell us very much at all. This could be Dragonstone. This could be Driftmark. This could be near King's Landing. This could be a lot of things. And it uh, could be something to do with Adam and Alan. Yep. You know. Could be Adam and Alan. Could be Sir Eric 
like sneaking onto Dragonstone to sneak into the castle. It would make it, the one thing we can say it's a small group of people, but there is a camp nearby. So I'm not sure about a, a single an individual, individual or two sneaking in the castle that maybe doesn't fit because there's maybe even though there's not a lot of people, there's a, like a couple dozen maybe. So that's that might be too many. So otherwise, yeah. So I can't see much about that. Um, you know, it's funny in my notes, I pointed out that the riot might be caused by the blockade, even though I <laughs> downplayed it when Sean made that suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to take the other side of the argument, whichever side he didn't take, just to, just to, for argument's sake. So yeah, it's, he's, he's right though. It's absolutely possible that the riot could be caused by the blockade. And that's why I put it here next to this beach and small craft thing, which is, well, if there's a blockade, this might be like related to that, like a way around it or small group getting around the blockade i don't know might be completely unrelated but all right the next shot is sir eric and sir Arik, most likely because we've got eric or Arik, can't tell which one it is fighting somebody and it's in a bedroom i mean <laughs> this really what else could it be it's got to be eric versus Arik. yeah exactly if, if we see eric there it is Arik on the ground if we see Arik, it is eric on the yeah. ground. <laughs> And remember, these are real life twins, not uh, unlike Jason uh, and Tylen Lannister, who was one actor playing both roles. Yeah. Which it would be hard to pull off a sword fight between <laughs> to the same guy. <laughs> so, but it's 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 one of Kristen Cole's first moves as Kingsguard or as Lord Commander in hand, and it's fitting in how unfitting it is. This is such an unfit, unworthy job for a Kingsguard knight. It is kind of clever, but. It's so dirty. <laughs> it's just a, another one of the things that people don't like about Kristen. Now, in the book, we're never explicitly told who the target of Eric was or who Eric's target was. It's assumed it's Rhaenyra, but there's a suggestion that it was Jace or Joffrey instead. So another son for another son being the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So the show's going to have to make that decision. They're not going to leave that ambiguous. It might be like, he might be like, kill as many of them as you can. <laughs> or it might just be kill Rhaenyra. If it's not kill Rhaenyra, that's wild. Because that means they're just going for revenge and not just trying to end the war. But they can't go for Jace because he's in the north. So, uh, I mean, I mean, that might be the target, but it won't work. Because, well, we know it won't work anyway, but he, he's not even there. Anyway. In the book as well, the timing kind of matters. Eric is slowly dying. And when he dies, they're still mourning him when they hear that Rook's rest is under attack. So that's obviously an important bit of, bit of timing and might be very relevant to how the show handles it. As for Heron Hall and Riverlands, additional commentary on that. This is somewhat related to the Damon execution scene, but also just all the scenes in the Riverlands. I don't remember again, I, I'll repeat, I don't remember Damon executing anyone in Herod Hall in the books, but it makes sense that he would. There'd be some people that are holdouts or whatever that don't that reject is there him. A chance Damon just is you doing something that isn't killing someone? I really doubt it. Okay. He's chopping downwards with a, with his sword, you know, very ceremonially. Yeah. Like yeah. what what else do you think it could be? Yeah, I don't know. Just just chopping something. I don't know. I'm just I just was really curious if you thought there's any chance uh, that he wasn't actually it wasn't a person under there. Very unlikely, in my opinion. Very yeah. unlikely. Because the given the angle too, it's someone on the it's yeah. something. Very it just down. it just makes me because it's been part of the weirwood, so it makes me think of him like slashing marks into the weirwood. You know, but he's like, not facing. No, he's not facing yeah. it. I just in terms of like he 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 has been known to mark yeah. up other things. Uh, the fact that it's front in front of the weirwood just maybe makes it me think even more that it's an execution because that's often where executions are done you know yeah. in front of the godswood or whatever anyway we'll we'll certainly see uh Eamon does execute simon strong and other people so i wonder if i don't know maybe there's a maybe damon kills one of the people that Eamon Eamon got killed, a bad rep he got he, everyone said Eamon did it and damon did it actually <laughs> Eamon has been known as, as a known strong lover in <laughs> fact not <laughs> hater <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. If Eamon, you know, takes out his frustration on the Strongs with uh, indirectly to uh, the Elder Strong. If that Bracken warrior we saw is not just a random warrior, it might be like Sir Amos or something. It might be, yeah. which is the one killed by Black Alley yeah. after he first Honestly, kills the only Lord thing, Samwell. 
the only thing that stops me there is that like I, I thought it was kind of interesting is that the, the, the bracken to the side of him was a big boy, but that bracken was like slim, which isn't how I think of the brackens, you know what I mean? Yeah, like the one to the left over here is like of the bracken type that I imagined, and the one in the middle was just like such a slim, slim boy. I just I was not not what I picture. Yeah. Um for the brackens. So I pulled off a quote here as well to remind us of the basics of the Riverlands campaign, which might help us sort through some of these images. Quote. For both the blacks and the greens, blood called to blood for bet. For both the blacks and the greens, blood called to blood for vengeance. And all across the realm, lords called their banners and armies gathered and began to march. In the Riverlands, raiders out of Raventree, flying Rhaenyra's banners, crossed into the lands of House Bracken, burning crops, driving off sheep and cattle, sacking villages, and despoiling every sept they came on. The Blackwoods were one of the last houses south of the Neck who still followed the old gods. When the Brackens gathered a strong force to strike back, Lord Samuel Blackwood surprised them on the march, taking them unawares as they camped beneath a riverside mill. In the fight that followed, the mill was put to the torch, and men fought and died for hours, bathed in the red light of the flames. We cited that last sentence long ago as something that would be very hard to resist as a cinematic option. <laughs> so really hoping we get the mill put to the torch with the men fighting bathed in the red light of the flames. I absolutely want to see that. Please give us that TV show. Uh, Rainier supporters, of course, end up winning in the Riverlands over the long run, which leads to Eamon's reign of terror. That's why he just takes to the sky and starts burning them all. And of course, that in turn leads to the eventual showdown over God's Eye. Uh, speaking of dragons, the next shot, we have a man with dreads and a big stick looking up at a dragon. Yeah, we were a little cagey with Sean on this, but that is very clearly Adam of Hall and Sea Smoke. There's further shots of Sea Smoke here coming up that Ashe will show y'all. I'm not sure if he's on. It's hard to tell if he's on, has mounted the dragon by this point. I think maybe, but it just might just be more of him watching. Yeah, it the would dragon. be kind of a pretty meaningful scene for to see his first ride on his dragon that he just tamed all on his own, that just came to him and bonded with him, and then he gets on and rides across the water, you know. Yeah, and I'm hoping for that because the more we see this, the more we're pretty sure Nettles has been cut. But they might give the important parts of Nettles' story to other characters. For example, let me lay it out like this. Bela doesn't do much in the books in the middle part of the story and does quite a lot at the end. Nettles is the opposite. She doesn't do very much at the end, but just quite a lot in the middle. Neither of them do very much at the beginning, so that's whatever. So it kind of makes sense from their perspective to combine them into one character, especially since there's already a rumor Nettles is Damon's daughter. They can do that. And if they give these important parts of Nettles' story to someone else, like taming a dragon naturally, not having a dragon seed. Unfortunately, Adam is like definitely a dragon seed, I guess. So uh, maybe not. Maybe they're going to go another way and maybe say he's not. Corley's his bastard. I don't know. No, there's there's other ways no they way. can handle it, but probably not. So no. that 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 might be I'll say, a thing we're gonna lose. Notable is that uh, Bethany Antonia, who plays Bela, mm -hmm. shared like a, 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 a picture supporting one of the actors who plays Alan and Adam, and said like call him Uncle. Oh, like warm uncle. Like she well, said, okay. she, 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 she used a sl slang <laughs> right term and then said Uncle. Okay. So like yeah, that, that's that's pretty, her. Pretty telling. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. So um, what that says to me in retrospect is that Nettles flew off into the sunset in the books. I think they gave the flying off into the sunset moment to Lainor instead. They wanted to preserve that thing and they gave it to Lainor instead. So that just kind of more tells me that this is what they've decided to do. And we'll just have to wait and see. The other thing clue is that they definitely aged up Moondancer. Like in the books, Moondancer is not old enough to be at war, but Damon explicitly says Moondancer is ready to fight. And here we have Bela on a dragon. A bunch of people thought this was Nettles in the trailer, but this is Bela. <laughs> yeah, they just I didn't remember like, yeah. who, what, <laughs> what Bethany Antonia looked like. Now, yeah. this is definitely Bela. <laughs> and she's clearly screaming. It could be like, since she's going to be added to a battle that she wasn't in, we can only speculate. Maybe she's at Rook's Rest. And maybe she, this is her reaction to Rain East going down. Or maybe this is just, ah, I'm dive, dive bombing some soldiers and I'm screaming. You know, it could be something that simple. I'll say the counterpoint to all of our thoughts here. We have some shots of filming um, of the dragon seed scene where we saw 
this man and these people and uh this man and well one of those is clearly a black girl like they just show a, a, a right of people but it is worth mentioning when we are speculating as to whether nettles is cut uh we have seen a a, a variety of dragon seed options hmm. so you know that's all maybe nettles will just take a dragon and then just immediately ride off in the sunset <laughs> She won't ever participate in anything. That yet. would be really funny. <laughs> He's like, I'm not participating in this war. This is dumb. I got a dragon now. Why do I have to fight with y'all? <laughs> I'm out of here. So, oh, yeah. the other uh, another possibility, which I think is slim for what scene we're seeing there with this screaming moment, is the Battle of the Gullet. Which, if because Nettles was in that. Now, the reason I think it's probably not there is they maybe haven't filmed that yet. On the other hand, this is just this will just be her in front of a green screen on that like bull riding dragon setup they have. So they yeah. wouldn't since they're not showing a lot of detail I'll here. Your idea is used that they put her at Rook's rest and she sees Rainey's die. Yeah, that she's screaming seeing that happen because Ray Bela also was the the was the closest that we've seen to Rainey's of mm. the next generation kids. So yeah. it would be extra meaningful for her to witness uh, that happening. She could be in the Battle of Gaunt also. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm true. Like, yeah, so th th there's nothing. One doesn't preclude the no, other. So, no. I mean, she, needs, she gets her battle experience in one, and then has another, like has another battle, and she's yeah. seasoned and hardened and all that. But yeah, I, I, I like the. I, I mean, she looks so, like. I mean, maybe she's just yelling because sometimes people they yell commands for the dragon or whatever too. Like, yeah. sometimes but she looks kind of like she's yelling upset to me. She, that, like yeah, she's that, that seems something. more than just like I'm exulting in my victory or yeah. I'm coming to attack you. Yeah, this seems, seems a little bit grim. You know? Yeah, I don't know. So we'll see. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it really could be her reaction to nothing, and she's just breathing dragon flame at someone, and, yeah. and she's the one making a tragedy happen. <laughs> yeah, she could you be. Know. Yeah, we could be seeing that. Could uh, be her strafing those soldiers. That yeah, we yeah. Were I mean, yeah, earlier. she could be doing that. We, we we can't we can't say we know, but I I do like the idea that if her being at Rook's rest. Yeah, I'll say that as a change. Next up, we have Kristen Cole executing someone, possibly like we said, a parallel moment to Damon, and you can see his hand of the king necklace there. That's. Uh, Oh yeah, very important. <laughs> Newly made, he's cut his hair and added a beard, so he looks a little different. I saw someone in one of the comments like, "Did they recast Kristen Cole?" Like, no, that's no, still him. him. <laughs> Fabian Frankel, still him. Yeah. So this takes place by a sea slash body of water. Now, the first thing he does when he's made hand is he brings up all the lords who had refused to bend the knee from the dungeons and threatened to kill those who didn't submit. Now we're pretty sure that's already happened because Otto did that at the in at the near the end of season one, uh, and he did execute some of them. But we're also in Fire and Blood. Kristen Cole goes to Duskendale and burns the port and executes their lord. That's almost certainly what we're seeing right here. Duskendale's a port. We're even seeing the sea, and we know Lord Darklin was cast, and we know the the Crownlands. Oh, we know the Darklands army rolls with him after this, after he executes their lord. So almost certainly that's what this is going on here. So this is probably episode one, but it could be episode two. Because Kristen Cole might not be made hand until episode two. More men burning is the next shot. This is probably just related to Rook's rest. This mm. could be Maylis or Moondancer. Yeah, it seems like a nighttime kind of burning. You know what? You're right. You know, this is nighttime, actually. It does seem burning like Mill. It. Maybe Battle yeah, of the Burning Mill, which takes place at night. Oh, yeah. good point. Yeah, I think I may have had that wrong initially, but I think yeah, maybe we have maybe like live that. corrected. <laughs> yeah, that could be Burning Mill Battle. That's a good call. I like it. Yeah. It makes more sense. Okay. Um, now... And also, I'll just show, since we talked about that Werewood, just real quick. Oh, yeah. Here's the picture of George and Ryan Condal in front of the Werewood, um, which... I don't think that's the Winterfell hair Werewood, so I think this is the Heron Hall Werewood. It looks like fucked up. I mean, it looks like a messed up... Uh, spot yeah like, yeah, like, the, like the, the, the stones or... and walls like yeah i'm guessing that that is this is a heron hall this tree. could be the very yeah, this could be the exact same werewood that Damon is in front of yeah, yeah that was the guess that i have right on because i mean of course we had to think that it could be winterfell but it just isn't the winterfell tree uh we know that one well so here's some more thoughts on men men burning in general and rook's rest thoughts okay, uh so Book Sir Kristen is giving orders from horseback while ordering his men to shoot at Maylis, which lines up with what we were saying earlier in the episode about cross additional crossbowmen and about him being on horseback. And, and seemingly we see him thrown from horseback in one of the trailer shots. Now, if we put this in context with Eamon's dream thing, this, the, the odd moment where he's looking at the throne and the strange lighting happens, 
This could be right after Rook's rest when his brother might be nearing death and Jaehaerys has already been killed. If there's no Maelor, if they've axed Maelor, or even if they have him, he's a two-year-old or a one-year-old, Aemon's path to the throne is a lot clearer. It's a lot more clear than it would have been, especially without Maelor. Then he's explicitly next in line, except mm -hmm. in, in, instead of Maelor. Okay. So, uh, because they're not obviously going to put Jahera on the throne. They're the they're the, the house that yeah. passes over women. So they're not, <laughs> obviously they have to go straight to the next man. Uh, uh... So, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. That's that. Okay. That's two things. Then. Yeah. One. Okay. So there's no other boy yet. Okay. So it's just it's just Jaharis and Jahera and Jaharis is killed. Yeah. So then it's just Jahera. Maybe Helena is then pregnant with Maelor right then. Right. Oh. So that's like, uh, what will happen with this? Oh. One. Two. Then that leaves Aemon like, wow, I am truly next in line to the throne right now. It adds a lot more tension to Aemon wanting to be king um, yeah. and, and again and then you add the additional complication something that i don't believe in but lots of people like to theorize about which is amond and helena and the idea of him cuckolding aegon and like her kids being his which again i don't think even if there is a romance between them i don't think they would ever act on it mm. but if you have her now pregnant with maylor say it's late yeah. you know it, it it leaves people to theorize yeah i don't think point. i don't think any any romance is in helena's future after, no. after all this yeah no i don't think any romance right. is but i do think that aemon cares about her yes um, agree so on agree. his side and um, it could you're right all they need is the suggestion that that her child might be his and that yeah would change a lot of things both in world and in terms of uh, fans is what I'm speaking of, both in terms of people theorizing or suspecting anything in the world, in world, but also just the way fans treat it. Yeah, absolutely. Two different things. And sticking on that topic of the dream, if yeah. the dream happens in Hall instead, like, cause this, if, cause if it's right after Rook's rest, then it's probably not at Hall. But if it's somewhere else or at Hall, then maybe Alice River, maybe some things that Alice Rivers says to him that makes him think okay, about well, it. Or maybe it's Alice Rivers herself having the dream. Yeah, well, here's where I also want to say, like, uh, just an interesting theory I read on Reddit in terms of, like, and fun, like spookiness, dreamness. Yeah. Someone theorized this shot of Rhaenyra that it was, like, it looks, I do think it looks a little bit uncanny, just, like, a little odd. I, I, I don't know. But someone theorized that what if Alice Rivers does like glamours and stuff and she's messing with, say, Damon's head in, in Heron Hall. She, she, the idea that Alice Rivers can do glamours uh, was really intriguing to me. So I wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. I mean, and given the agelessness and all that, like, yeah. it makes sense. Like, that would be why she's ageless if she's doing glamours like a Melisandre yeah, or something. Yeah. I like would that. like that. I would like to see some spookiness. And that's why people were also even theorizing about Alice. I mean, about, about Alice uh, at the water. And all of that, which I don't think that is the case. I think we have a perfectly fine explanation to that. But I yeah. expect to see a lot of theorizing this season mm -hmm. re revolving around Alice Rivers, how much magic she can use, what she might use to manipulate people. I expect to see a lot of uh, discussion about that sort of thing. Yeah, so to follow up on this scene, Alicent by the water in her wh all white is almost certainly a blood and cheese thing as well. Though it yeah, could be yes. something else because she's going to lose other family. <laughs> But that's given that we expect most of these scenes or the early part of the season, that's probably the best bet. There's uh, other possibilities for dreamers, too. You know, it doesn't have to just be Alice or. Yeah, I mean, it could be Ulf the White. Demons. Yeah, it could be Ulf the White. It could uh, be someone I Adam sure. or Allen or something yeah. strange like that. Yeah. That would be weird. It could be, could be Raina. Could be. Raina, oh, sure, know. sure. Um, yeah, lots of options. Can I share the dragon head thing? Yeah. Another notable shot from filming. This is, in fact, a, a blue screen uh, dragon head with all these weapons in it. That is Melee's. That's yeah, got to be Melee's head. If you recall from the books, after Kristen Cole wins at Rook's Rest, he cuts off Melee's head and brings it back to the street, to the to King's Landing. And people are like, oh, they're just like flummoxed. Maybe that's what so Karts starts the riot. <laughs> yeah, it could be around then, too. Yeah, yeah that, that's a true enough point. Um we also we we from the funeral scenes we saw it we we also do see uh, I showed these right here of them in the the wagon mm -hmm. but we also see little Jaharis um, just uh, you know I won't keep out on screen too long too very sad <laughs> uh, simply yeah. that mm -hmm. so uh, we notably didn't see Alice Rivers or shots of her unless she's glamoured. <laughs> <laughs> We also didn't see Daron or, as we said, Maelor, but I like the idea of, of her being pregnant with Maelor. That that would yeah. be a really good way to like fit it in there without much of a change to the main story. 
creating a little more ambiguity, creating a little more conflict and just making it easier on themselves because we all know how hard it is to have babies. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, have babies just... on set. Have babies. You know, it's easy to have babies <laughs> to make them, to raise them. That's another part. Yeah. So again, Daron and Mailer are both in the family tree intro stuff. So, uh, oh, wait, I'm... no, Maylor, wait, is Maylor in the intro? I, I forget if Maylor was in the intro, but like, or in the family tree, actually. He was, definitely. Okay. Absolutely, 100%. Oh, I checked. okay. Then There's three I'm... lines coming off of, uh, off of, off of, oh, okay. off of uh, Helena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But it doesn't have a sigil, like it's just a blank. Yeah. Anyway, very sure about that. So uh, we still have, I guess my prediction that the season would end with the Battle of the Gullet, I think. Is still where I land. I'm still on that. I haven't changed that. This this trailer doesn't increase my confidence. It doesn't really take anything away from it either because, again, we're still looking at mostly the first half of the season probably. They did seemingly confirm that this will be a four-season run, whereas before it was kind of in doubt whether it would be three or four. And that's good because just getting to, let's say, roughly the Battle of the Gull at the end of the season, there's still so much left after that. One more season would not be enough, especially with only eight episodes. So. Yeah, mm. that's good. Um, okay. You know, I think that's about it. I that think that's it. about that's all the trailer shots. Uh, we discussed the voiceover and all that. Yeah, that's a lot of good stuff. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Pretty exciting indeed. We still got a ways to wait. Six months minimum. Well, seven months minimum, I guess. As of it's, it's December tenth as of this recording. So, yeah, probably June at the earliest. But um, you know, maybe June. Yeah. To keep you all invested in Dance of the Dragons content, we are getting pretty close to the next uh, collaboration with Radio Westeros, part six of our Dance of the Dragons episode. It is uh, very close to being recorded. If everything goes well, it'll be recorded this current week, and we'll see when it gets published, but it'll certainly be before the end of the year. So uh, 2023 will be closed out with uh, that and whatever else we have, we squeeze in before the end of the year and we'll be hitting the ground running in January as well. Lots more content and lots more fun stuff to discuss. We'll certainly jump on the next trailer whenever that happens, but it probably won't be too soon, but maybe two to three months. We'll see. We'll be there whenever that happens to discuss it with you all. And you know what to do. Oh, actually real quick. Oh, yeah. Um, more things to say. I was one, I'm getting ahead of myself. One last thing. Uh, we have our last uh, Discord patron hangout of the year uh, on December 21st yes. at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's a Thursday. Um, and we'll announce it. We've announced it on Patreon. And we'll continue to, to plug it. But if you're listening to this and it's before December 21st, 2023, uh, then mm -hmm. come join us. Yes, absolutely. Do flash. so. Thanks as well. If you support us on Patreon and can't make the Discord hangout, we certainly appreciate your support regardless. Same we're goes we're if saying if you can't support us on Patreon and you can't make the hangout, if you go to our Facebook page, we stream them to the yeah. Facebook page so you can still watch. And that's true even months later because it's streamed there so you could watch later. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And you can do audience participation in a lot of these too. There's a lot of them that you get to vote on which thing is the funniest or which picture is this or that a lot of different voting options in these games that we play. So audience participation is a part of it. It's baked in. It's a lot of, a lot of fun. And uh, we hope you come join us. Thanks as well to people who support us on Spotify. That's another place you can sign up and get all our bonus episodes. And as well, you can do that by sending us a donation through PayPal. All these things are linked on our website or at least explained, or you can find the ways to get there. And thanks as well to Joey, Jesse, and Bran, and Michael Klarfeld for different assistance with our music and videos and all the stuff, especially Bran. We, we talk about him sometimes. He's the guy that did our awesome House of the Dragon intro, which we'll be bringing back. I should have used it for this version. episode. I'm such a yeah, fool. I, you could have. Yeah, I, I didn't think have. I didn't think about it. My bad. But he's been he's been tweaking it. It's going to be even better this time. Yeah. So we're excited to debut that along with other things. 2024 is going to be great, y'all. Another awesome year of the Song of Ice and Fire, House of the Dragon, and Game of Thrones content. And you know what to do. Until next time, Valar re-read us. Valar re-watch us this time. <laughs> that too, yeah. <laughs>